two of college baseball's elite converge in Austin. Arkansas and Texas share old and recent memories. In 2018, the Razorbacks had their first title within grasp, and then they didn't. Popped up. Shadies over there, so is Gates. Tough play. Nobody gets it. Wow. This week's matchup has Omaha implications for the old Southwest Conference rivals. The Arkansas Razorbacks and the Texas Longhorns face off next. It is time for game two between Texas and Arkansas. Razorbacks took game one in dominant fashion a night ago. Texas trying to get a win, get some momentum back before they head up to Fort Worth to take on TCU on Friday. This is how it went down. Arkansas was aggressive out the plate, right out of the chute. In the second inning, bases loaded for Christian Franklin. Franklin listed up into the jet stream, and it keeps going for the grand slam. A few batters later, Heston Kerstad, an absolute rocket. One of the deepest shots we've seen here at Dishbach in the BB Core era. Breaks window, who's that? Caston Peter. Caston Peter over the national championship board. Gave a couple runs to the Longhorns, but Arkansas still wins 11 to 4. With that, hello and welcome to Austin. Lowell Galindo here with Keith Moreland and Greg Swindell. When you talk about the overall series, Texas has dominated this one against Arkansas. But if you go back to the start of last season, it's four straight wins for the Hogs over the Horns, and they've been dominant wins. Yeah, they've been dominant. You talk about a team that owning another. Uh, Arkansas has done that against Texas. Two in Fayetteville last year. You see 13-4, 7-5 in the College World Series, the same thing. They haven't really played their best ball as Texas against Arkansas, really haven't pitched well. But right now in the stretch that they're in, they need to get off to a clean start because they got still got a tough schedule coming well, up. Well, I'd say what it has been a gauntlet, folks. It's one of the toughest schedules in the country, no doubt. And I think if right now you you see a team that is emotionally maybe a little spent. You've taken on LSU. You've taken on Stanford on the road, came back home, had a huge conference series, guys, against Texas Tech, found a way to win Sunday. And then last night you could see a team that might have been a little flat, but you got to pitch, you got to hit, and you got to take care of business defensively. And that's the most important thing. And then on the other side, you look at the lineup they're facing tonight, guys, in Arkansas. It's a good one. Yeah, keep it down against Dave Van Horn and his offense. We saw the Razorbacks come out aggressive and set the tone. Kerstad with the home run, Franklin with the grand slam, Fletcher with two doubles as well. It was from top to bottom. Yeah, you, you look at Fletcher. This is a guy that's accounted for 29 runs, and he's going to face a young freshman right-hander, Greg, and Kobe Kubicek. Yeah, last time we saw Colby, he was on the mound on Sunday getting a save against Texas Tech. Tonight with the two midweek games, gets the call to make his first start one against the, Arkansas. Yeah, one of the things we see from this young man is he attacks the strike zone. And uh, you know, Coach Pierce talked about it, you know, he's mentioned it. I'm going to get guys that want to go after the strike zone, and that's what this young man does. We saw that early on from Jack Neely, who got the start last night, as Casey Martin leads off by popping it up. Long run for Tate Shaw, turns himself around to make the grab. Went one, two, three in the first. But after that, Neely started leaving things up in the zone, and that's when Arkansas really took advantage. Yeah, you know, early in the ballgame, I, I really feel like that uh, might have had a couple of bad breaks uh, with pitches that could have been called strikes. It, 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 yeah, that's ifs and buts, you know. But you still have to make pitches when you have guys on, Greg, and he didn't make pitches when guys were in scoring position. Yeah, the ball obviously up in the zone. That's that's the biggest key when, when Jack can create angle and keep the ball down. He's effective, and last night, Second, third inning, got the ball elevated. And this has been the real issue for Texas. Since this man arrived in Fayetteville, Heston Kerstad has set out to do damage against the Longhorns. Saw him have a brilliant performance in Omaha, leading the Razorbacks to a win in what was the CWS opener for both teams. And that shot last night is one of the better looking balls we've seen off the bat here. Oh, he's, he's got really good power. He, he stays inside the ball so well. He's hard to change up, even with that high leg kick. On the ground to Lance Ford. Two outs. Anytime you get the first two guys in this order, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. Well, you know they're swinging. They have 14 walks between them all season. Get the ball around the plate. They're going to be hacking. But similar to last night, Jack nearly, nearly throwing strikes early. And 
Colby Kubacek doing the same so far in the first. No errors in last night's game, but was a far from a clean performance for the Texas defense. There were some misplays. Well, that's a good short point. Misplay at first base. It was in that critical second inning when Neely was trying to cover on a ball hit to Ford, and it was really stuck whether it was going to be Neely covering or Shaw at first base. Shaw made the grab, but ended up losing the ball on contact. A couple of walks followed that, and then Franklin stepped up to hit the grand slam. The complexion of the game could have been entirely different if they make that play. Yeah, if you make the play, it's one nothing, and you got a chance to get out of the inning. Instead, it turns into a six spot. Trevor Ezell, transfer from Southeast Missouri State. Ezell's from Bryan, Arkansas. That ball landed either in a popcorn or a beer. I, I believe it was a popcorn. I saw something splash around. Popcorn it is. Did he use it as a glove? Well, it, it was a mistake. That's going to get down for Ezell. And it's the first hit of the evening for the Razorbacks. You said we were mentioning Bryant, Arkansas, a really good baseball town. Little Rock area. Change up from Colby right there. Credit right there to Ezell for staying back long enough. Hitting it off the end, out there into right center. This Hogs lineup so good. Number four hitter steps in, Dominic Fletcher. Had two of the five extra base hits for the Razorbacks last night. Both of them doubles. And that one is ripped up the middle. Duke Ellis, a little lunge, makes the catch. One hit on the board for the Razorbacks. No runs going to the bottom of the first. Boy, I tell you what, just look at those numbers. You were talking about it last night. Tate's only got 42 at-bats on the year, but he's driven in 14 runs That's and scored nine runs. That's producing 21 runs. There are a lot of guys in this lineup that have played in every ball game that have double his at-bats don't have those numbers. Shaw drove in two off a double last night. Picture for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Marshall Denton making his second start of the year. Yeah, I see the sophomore out of BB Arkansas right there. First start, mainly a reliever, talking to Coach Van Horn yesterday, probably going to throw maybe, he said, possibly six or seven arms today. We've already seen him go to the bullpen, but only six and two-thirds innings for Marshall Denton on the season. Throws out of the stretch. You can tell he's a, a bullpen guy. Arkansas trying to keep their rotation, their bullpen in order as they go back to SEC play this weekend. Road trip to Tuscaloosa. Same deal for Texas as they play their second Big 12 series up in Fort Worth against TCU. Hibbler leading off for the second time this season. That's that angle right there, a little sidearm sweeper from Denton he's a fastball slider pitcher that one right there tough to see yeah, it was a fastball count too. Hitler had one hit last night his final at bat. Duke Ellis has moved down to the number two spot. Hitler led off in 11 games last season. From hearing him talk. And the dugout before yesterday's game seemed pretty excited to be back in that leadoff spot. Got a smile on his face. He's hitting 083 coming into this month. Really has turned it around. Tough play up the middle for Jack Kinley. And makes the play in time to retire Hibbler. You see this delivery from Marshall Denton. Just like his fastball drops way down, brings that sidearm, slings it in there. It's tough to pick up because it's the same release point as the fastball. Except it sweeps away. Left-handers have a much better chance to have a view of this. But it might take it away from the left-handers mainly because if it does, it's coming in right into a left-hander's wheelhouse. Jacob Nesbitt playing in close over at third base. Respect to the speed and the bunting ability of Ellis. Popped up. 
Nesbitt will give it a look, but it's out of play. Oh, the yeah. bare hands! How you doing? Gives it away to a little horn fan right there. Nice gesture. What a play, though. This is nice. Over the shoulder, leaping up. Kept his balance. Very nice. Sign him up, coach. Who needs a glove? Ellis, the junior from Nacogdoches, hitting 230 on the season, but you see the OBP. And he's got some pop. That one is down. Ellis taking the aggressive turn. He's going to test the arm of Fletcher, and he's in safely. Second double of the season for Duke Ellis. Greg, you mentioned it right away that this breaking ball might be one that comes into the hitter. Now watch this. It comes right back to him. And then it, Ellis does a nice job. He left home plate thinking to say, throw me out, especially early in the ball game. Oh, I'm sure needs to get something going offensively. I'm sure there's been conversation that we need to be a little more aggressive and Duke right there out of the box. This is the guy that Texas wants up. With a runner in scoring position, Austin Todd has led the team in that category. Basically, every matrix that sums up producing runs, Austin Todd is at the top of it for this Texas team. 15 of 30 this season with runners in scoring position. Thought about it, passed it up 1-1. And Ellis was running on one of the top defensive center fielders in college baseball, Dominic Fletcher. Good speed in this Texas lineup. Yeah, his, his breaking ball is his out pitch to the right hitters. That's a show me fastball. And you make sure that you show it in middle end from that angle because the only place you can hit it is pull it foul. Now he'll go away with the sweeper. He's going to keep you off balance with the fastball in and get, put you away with the slider away. Which if you're looking for the slider away, you could also get them in with that fastball. There's the slider. Todd waves through it, two down. He's going to be really, really difficult on right-handed hitters. You see that exactly what Greg's been talking about, folks, and that camera angle was perfect. Fastball comes out of that same spot, only it's got a different spin. And you can't pick it up. Tight spin. Eric Kennedy hitting in the four spot for the second straight night. Trying to bring in Ellis. Got on board via a one-out double to center field. Eric is the third Kennedy to play for the Longhorns. Check swing. Did not go. This barrel is definitely out in front of home plate. Yeah, that, if he hits that, it might left the ballpark. Take advantage. Inside, three balls, no strikes. Sixteen driven in by the freshman so far this season. Hold that thought. New catcher tonight for the Razorbacks. Zach Plunkett gets the start. Native Texan from Hearst, Texas, L.D. Bell High School. Is that the Metroplex? Yep. Casey Opitz got the start in game one. I Plunkett. think he's going to see a change up here. Zach on the board with a call. 3-2. That's the fastball. Kinley handles it. 
And Ellis left on second. No score. Going to the second. Off to a good start attendance-wise here at UFCU Dish Fog Field. Had a really good crowd show up last night. A lot of Arkansas fans. It made a lot of noise. Called in those hogs early on. Been a little more subdued to this point in time, but it's just a matter of time before they get going. Something off the bat of Jordan McFarlane could help that. But the fan base here in Austin has done a good job showing up. Three games against Texas Tech. That set a regular season attendance record for a three-game series for the Longhorns. It helps when the team is playing well. Helps when you have administration that's making attendance a priority. It also helps when you schedule big-time non-conference series like an LSU, and in this case, the Arkansas Razorbacks. And that hit McFarland, but got him on the hands, it seems. Team trainer is going to come out and give it a look. It didn't bounce too far away from home plate. Got it, it didn't. Pretty flush. Breaking ball, I believe, wasn't it? Got away from Colby right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wrist. Sure did. That's going to be sore. So that is the first free pass issued by Kubitschek. That has been an issue for Texas pitching so far this season. Six walks issued by the Longhorns pitchers last night. Hit well by Kenley. Kennedy giving it a chase. It gets down. Here comes McFarland. Ground rule double. McFarland being brought back to third base. That young man's got a souvenir. And the Razorbacks have something cooking here in the top of the second. Same inning that they really sent the charge to Texas last night. Well, it, it goes back to the what you were talking about it seems like right now for Texas pitching uh, when they give away a, a free base it comes back to hurt them Got to credit the hitter right there too. that's good letting, piece the, ball, letting the ball travel get deep and taking it right down the left field line keeping it fair Nesbitt had a two run double last night going over the head or past the glove of Ford and the Razorbacks are on the board as Kinley will chuck it for third. Runners on the corners, no outs, and it's a 1 nothing lead for Arkansas. This is the luck of the draw. Caught this out on the end of the bat a little bit on a slider. You'll see it right out, cue ball, right off the end, and doesn't have a lot on it. It was just hitting the right spot. No chance for Ford to get to it. Sort of fades away from him. Going to drive in a run, put runners at first and third. Now try to limit the damage here. Stay away from a crooked number. See that number right there at the tar top. Arkansas has been really good when they score first. Did that last night, scored the first 11 runs. Check back to Nesbitt at first base. See if Colby can get some sink. On this fastball right here, keep it down in the zone. You trade that run for a double play yeah. right here. That's the one he wants right there. Showed bunt. Might have been a safety squeeze scenario.
Swing and a miss from Plunkett. Guys were talking about working low in the zone, and that was one of the big teaching moments from David Pierce after last night. As the bunt is put down, Kubitschek will go to one. That does its job, and it's 2 nothing Arkansas. Coach Pierce went back, looked at the stuff. So fastballs, sliders, the velo for Texas, and all the numbers you base the fastball efficiency, slider efficiency off of was better than Arkansas. But what the Texas pitching staff did, they left things up in the zone. Arkansas was able to punish those baseballs while the Arkansas staff was able to work lower in the zone. One of those balls left up to Christian Franklin. Over the glove of Kubitschek and it gets past Ford. For a moment Nesbitt halted at third. Waved home and it's 3-0 Arkansas. Another big second inning for the Razorbacks. Put it on the head of the bat and see what happens. And that's exactly what happened right there. It just could not, Ford couldn't quite get to it. Takes a big high hop. And once it clears the infield, it was going to score the run. I got to lay out right there if I'm at second. If I'm laying score, I got a runner in scoring position. You're chasing two. I got to try to keep that ball on the infield. Top of the lineup now, Casey Martin. Popped out to first base his first time up. Arkansas will step on the gas. They'll run. Seeing what's different with Kubacek in this inning, not getting ahead yep. of the hitters. Franklin six for seven in stolen bases. It was caught last night. Five RBI now against the Longhorns in this series for Christian Franklin. Another bunt right back to Kubacek. We'll go to the first tough place for Shaw. That tag on an awkward ankle with his arm. Appears he's okay. There's two outs. Well, throw back into the runner, and that's that's the one that's the toughest one for you as a first baseman. See the throw going up, stride just a little early, and his arm gets caught up a little bit with Martin. I've seen arm injuries. Yeah, we've that seen. Play. Yeah, absolutely. Tor pectoral muscles. Here's Kerstead, grounded out to second. That's inside. McCann once again getting the start behind the plate. Caston Peter came on for him about halfway through last night. Kerstead, the sophomore from Amarillo. Wind now blowing in from center field. Now that's a change from batting practice. We had a little front come through and ball was traveling early and then it won't travel as well as it was in batting practice, that's for sure. Talked to Coach Van Horn after that home run from Kerstad last night. We asked him how that compared to some of the shots that he's had in his young career. Said that was a good one. Not quite as good as the one that went over the scoreboard in Fayetteville. Shaw could not make the pick. Franklin scores 4 nothing Arkansas. You're going to your right, if you're Hibbler. Had to get rid of it quickly with Martin, our left-hander going down the line. Shaw just couldn't come up and make the pick. First error in the last 46 innings for the Longhorns is that is past Hibbler to left field. 
And a base knock for Trevor Ezel. Ninth batter of the inning coming to the plate. Just let it get deep. Drives it the other way. Well, I mean, it's not like they're taking really big swings. They're just going Placing with it. the pitches, right? Putting it in the right spot. Michael McCann out to talk to Colby for a little bit. Get that bullpen going. Get the bullpen going down there. Nico O'Donnell on the right and Mason Bryan on the left. So swing early against Kobe. Three of the five hits have been on first pitch. And David Pierce now out to talk with a freshman pitcher. And you're hearing from those Arkansas fans, and this is why, because in the second inning, the Razorbacks on the diamond have given those that showed up in the seats here something to talk about, something to yell about. Ten runs, eight hits in the second inning alone. And it's a good crowd here for Texas, but like last night, Arkansas has seized the momentum. They've gotten their fans into the game before Texas has been able to get their fans into it. Yeah, you got the... The hit batter, and right behind that you have the double. It sort of started it, and then you get the base hit. It's first and third. And it's going to be a pitching change. It's going to be Mason Bryant out of the bullpen for the Longhorns. We'll tell you about his game next. Beautiful scene, the 360 bridge here in Austin, Texas. Penny backer. They're going fast. Too fast. Trying to get here to UFCU Dish Fog Field. Taking game two between Texas and Arkansas. And the second inning has been big for the Razorbacks again. And Colby Kubacek has been chased. Mason Bryant, a freshman, will take his place. Yeah, another freshman, big arm for Texas. He's having a good season right there. You see his eighth game. Numbers are really good for Mason. Big upside, strong arm, big size kid. Just another one of the talented arms that's, that's in the bullpen for this Texas team. They're just trying to get consistency out of them. Second straight game that the Razorbacks will send up at least nine in the second inning. It started with Kubitschek hitting Jordan McFarland. Kimley following up with a ground rule double down the left field line. Nesbitt put one just past Ford to drive in the first run. Plunkett dropped a bunt to make it 2-0. And then Christian Franklin went up the middle. The ball that got past Ford and Hibbler to make it 3-0. Throwing error on Mason Hibbler led to another run. And that's now we got to 4 0 Arkansas. Dominic Fletcher, two on, two outs. And Bryant will take a peek. His extension to Fletcher got to crowd it. You get it out of the plate. He's got a great extension. You saw Neely last night almost get in there. He kept it inside the line down the right field line. That's in there for Mason Bryant. 0 2.
Bryant will try to end it here. Hibbler with another chance. Looks at second, goes to first. Shaw makes the nap. And it's four Arkansas runs put up in the second inning. That makes it 10 Hogs run in the second inning in two games against the Longhorns. It's a 4 nothing lead for the Razorbacks. They've shown up here in Austin ready to swing the sticks and they have done that. Both these games retired quickly in the first inning but big second innings proved to be the difference in game number one and the offensive explosion here in game number two has given the Razorbacks a 4 nothing lead. Keith, what does Texas need to do? Well, here you got to an answer. You, you got to find a way to get something going. Okay. Arkansas is going to use a lot of different pitchers tonight, so it's going to be one of those games where you're not going to see a guy probably more than once. Get a base runner. A bloop and a blast and try to get back in it. Zobia was one for four last night. Looks at strike one. Going to have to have some extra base hits. And with the two midweek games, Kubitschek and Neely, last night and tonight, combined three and two-thirds innings. Gave up 10 hits, 12 runs, 11 earned in three and two thirds. Seven freshman pitchers on this Texas staff. Arkansas also with seven freshman arms they use. 0 2 to Zubia. Does not chase. That looked like it could have been a changeup. From Denton. Didn't have the sweep that the slider has. That one kind of went straight down. Zubia strikeout and a couple of flyouts to center last night. Patrick Wicklander got the start. Looked really good until the fourth inning when Texas was able to. Get all four of their runs up. Up the middle, Martin is there. So quick, nice arm. He is smooth, that shortstop. Well, that's his natural position. Him, third baseman last year as a freshman. Moves over. Got a bright future, no doubt about it. Arkansas bullpen was also very good. We didn't talk about them enough last night. Cole Ramage, Zubalon Vermillion, the jobs that they did after Texas got some of that momentum back, putting up four runs. They came in and pretty much mowed down the Texas lineup as Reynolds grounds out the second. Cole, all he did is come in and retire nine batters in a row. So that's being effective. Three innings of work, faced nine, retired all nine. Arkansas staff with one of the best strikeouts to walk ratios in all of college baseball. Tate Shaw drove into last night. He stands in for the first time this evening. An Arkansas bullpen, five innings, one hit, no runs, six strikeouts, and one walk. Similar to what Texas bullpen did that Friday night against Tech. The constant the out of the bullpen you have to have is the one walk. You just can't, you can't add base runners. Important for Texas to get something going now. They were able to muster a little bit of a late charge, but that was after Arkansas put up 11 runs. Really got the sense that the game was essentially over at that point. 
Now you're down 11 nothing. David Pierce took his starting catcher out of the game. Get the freshman cast and Peter some time behind the, the plate. Texas had an opportunity in the first with Duke Ellis. It was double to center field with one out. Todd and Kennedy were not able to bring him home. When you're playing good offense, guys, one of the other things that we've seen over Texas and Arkansas is two out hitting. And, and Texas has struggled in that department. Got to find a way to score even though you got two outs in an inning. Michael McCann. So much on McCann this season to stay healthy, stay upright. It's basically him and young Cast and Peter. DJ Petrinsky had surgery this morning. Everything went as planned. So they opened up that shoulder, got everything fixed up. Petrinsky will be back next year after a medical red shirt. from McCann. And this could be it for Marshall Denton. Is that Arkansas bullpen is hot. To Martin. We will flip over to Kinley. Marshall Denton does his job. Probably leaving with a 4-0 lead. Go to the top of the third here in Austin. Razorbacks with a 4 0 lead. As they exploded for those four runs in the top of the second. Arkansas pitching, holding the Longhorns to a single hit. Mason Bryant back out for the third inning. He came in place of Colby Kubacek. Freshman making his first career start, going one and two thirds. Five hits, four runs, three of them earned. Also hit a batter as the Razorbacks hit all nine last inning. This is Jordan McFarlane playing in that DH role tonight. Matt Goodhart was in that spot a night ago. Mason Bryant, your job now, keep it at four. Yep. Texas was able to get four last night, but too late. Bullpen came in after Jack Neely. And didn't do as well. So right now, keep it where it is and give your chance, to give your team a chance. Greg, over the years we've talked about it. There's there's times in a ball game that are difficult to pitch. Sometimes this is a really hard roll coming out of the bullpen. You're really not in touch in the game, and you know you can't give up anymore. Sometimes it can be difficult to pitch in this in this scenario. Cheese. Here's the 2-2 from Bryant. Popped up out of play. Got him set up for a breaking ball if he could go to it right here. We have just gotten a report from our production truck that that foul ball actually hit the truck. It was very loud. It startled many. So did the one that just hit the back wall. <laughs> did not hit the mascot. Seventh pitch coming from Mason Bryant to Jordan McFarland. Goes a mile high. Reynolds giving it a courtesy look. I believe that was Derek Jeter giving chase. Or at least a man wearing a Derek Jeter uniform. No, it was Derek Jeter. Full count. 
Low hit to center field. Ellis going back. And coming back in with that win blowing in for the first out. Good battle there between Bryant and McFarland. A really good for Mason to get that leadoff hitter. It's always important when you're chasing runs. Good hitting team like Arkansas. Keep that leadoff guy off the base. The ball off the bat there by McFarland is what I was anticipating last night when Christian Franklin get his to left field. It looked like it was going to be a routine fly ball and it kept going and going and going until it was over that left field fence. Wind blowing in tonight as Bryant blows that by Jack Kinley. This is down to make it one two. Some impressive home runs last night. We talked a lot about Kerstad, but the one hit by Caston Peter was also a no doubter that went clear over national championship wall beyond the Arkansas bullpen. Inside to make it two two. The home run from Franklin seen there. Just the second home run allowed by Texas pitchers at UFCU Dish Fog Field this season. Herstad would follow the same inning, hitting the third. Some power bats in this lineup for Dave Van Horn. Last season, Arkansas had one of the top lineups in America, finished third nationally in total home runs. Top 10 in runs scored was seven per game. Five different players with double digit home runs last season. As two long at bats for Arkansas to start off the third. McFarland ended with the fly out to center. Kinley goes to first base on the walk. They're way ahead, 0 2. That at bat and went to nibbling, went to picking instead of challenging. You can, you can challenge guys with off speed pitches, but in within the zone. Got to make it close. Around the plate. When it comes out of your hand, Greg, as a ball, as a hitter, it's an, you know, obviously an easy take. Jacob Nesbitt drove in the first run for the Hogs, his first time out. And a single to right field. That was after a free pass. Put McFarland on as he was hit by Kubitschek. Kenley followed with a double. So five Razorbacks with double digit home runs last season. Returned three of those players. And they're using a lot more speed. How about that? Not the best swing by Nesbitt. Well, hit and run is on. That puts it right through the vacancy created by four. He was trying every way in the world to check his swing right here. He was trying to check and <laughs> it hit his barrel and, and went in the right spot. That's that's when you know things are not going your way. That tells me that was just a straight steal. That wasn't yeah. a run. Yeah. <laughs> trying to hold up and got a knock. Arkansas not pounding out these hits and these runs like last night, but putting them in the right place. Here comes Shaw. He's crashing early. And no bunch shown there from Plunkett. Safety squeezed his first at bat, right? Yes. Side. 
So it's an Arkansas team that's running a lot more than they did last season. Last season was one of the lowest totals that Arkansas has had since about the 1970s when it comes to stolen bases. As you pointed out, Keith, Coach Van Horn typically likes to get athletes that can move around a little bit, but there wasn't as much of a need to do that last season because of all that potent power. Living with the Earl Weaver theory, that three-run yeah. homer. You don't want to run into an out when a guy can hit a ball in the ballpark. If you got a guy on, that's a two-run shot. Those two and three-run shots are hard to overcome. Solo homers don't beat you. Not very often. 39 steals last season, second lowest total for the Razorbacks since 1972. 2 1 to Plunkett. Runner is off from first, but Nesbitt will have to come back. He gave up four solos and got beat one night. <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> it only happened once. How many games you pitch in your big league career? Okay. okay. Good point. <laughs> Look at those offensive guys. Hey, man, I just gave up four. You got to get me some. Let's go. <laughs> Bryant looking for a double play ball. Nesbitt is off the throw down by McCann. Ford was coming up to try to catch Kinley over at third base. Infield drawing up now for Texas. Well, it seems like every time you look up, it's 3-2. He's getting ahead. He just can't put him away. Finish. McFarland, Kenley, and Plunkett. Now going to full counts this inning. And that is the second walk this inning by Bryant. Base is loaded for Christian Franklin. Last time we had this situation, this is the result. Grand slam for Christian Franklin. Ball that just kept on going, and that Austin win. And a moment that will not soon be forgotten by Christian Franklin. This is their RBI leader, the In number nine spot. Corners in for Texas. First pitch ball for Mason Bryant. Twenty three driven in by Franklin this season. And it's one one. The next on the list is Casey Martin. It was on deck. Martin with 18 driven in. Popped up. Shaw giving it a run. Out of play. So this is what Christian Franklin said last night as you hit that grand slam. There's nothing like it hitting a home run, especially a grand slam. I hit one in high school, but to hit one, especially against Texas, it means a lot. And everything against a program like Texas is magnified. It does mean a little bit more, especially in this rivalry and what it means to the Arkansas fan base. One, two. Well, that was the right pitch. It just, again, never looked like a strike coming out of Mason's hand. Franklin fouls it back. You don't want to live up there. You got a good fastball, but. That one at the letters. Looking for something down. Get you a ground ball. Yep. Good, good speed at the plate. You got to turn it in a hurry. Get the ball in the air. It's not going to travel very far with the breeze coming in. Franklin rips it. Foul. Right side. Some really tough at bats this half inning by lot, the Razorbacks. A lot of pitches. Seventh pitch coming to Christian Franklin. Yeah. 
Chop to Reynolds, he steps on the bag, fires across for the double play. Base is loaded, and Mason Bryant gets out of it. Razorbacks still lead 4-0, top of the Texas Bats to get going. The I've seen the offensive approach and the results because of it. Tell us about your mentality. What do you want your guys to do when they step in that box? Well, we're, we're swinging the bats pretty good the last couple of days. You know, we got shut down pretty good against Missouri this past weekend. And it was, it was very frustrating. And uh, I just think the guys are being aggressive in the zone. We haven't chased a whole lot. And, you know, we've, we've been a little lucky. We put together some good innings, hit the ball where they're not. And, uh, you know, it's worked out so far. Yeah, you're traveling on the, you play Missouri, and then you come down here for two, and now you're going to have to go this weekend to Alabama. What will you do the rest of the night with your pitching staff? Will we see uh, quite a few of them? <laughs> Yeah, this is the first of uh, maybe six or seven more. So, uh, you know, Marshall Denton gave us two pretty good innings right there, but we, we also would like to have them available for the weekend. And so from now on, I think all we have left down there is, is freshmen. So we'll see how it goes. Well, Coach, we appreciate your generosity with your time. Best of luck in this game, finishing it out, and the rest of the way in the SEC. All right. Thank you, guys. Class act right there. Dave Van Horn, former SEC and Big 12 Coach of the Year. Played at Arkansas in 1982 after starting his college career at McLennan Community College in Waco. And that one season, all Southwest Conference third baseman. Played Texas four times. A couple of knocks off Roger Clemens. He's own, he owns the rocket. Look at that. A couple hits. Yeah. Right here. At the dish. Van Horn, a 10th round draft pick of the Braves after that season. Played for a few years in the minor league system. As Lance Ford takes the first pitch from Evan Taylor and plants it from center field. Evan Taylor, see right there from Florence, Alabama, big freshman, 6'4, 235. Good numbers. Fastball, curveball pitcher for the big man. Marshall Denton with the two innings. Just gave up a hit, walked one, struck out one, had five ground outs, no fly balls. Hibbler fouls that one back. Now we talked about as a hitter, th these are the are hard when you know you're going to see six seven pitches you're going to face a guy one time so you know Arkansas is not on the schedule at this point now, yep. it may be postseason you might see a chance to see him again so it's a huge advantage I think for a pitcher on a hitter when you as a hitter I haven't seen you it makes uh, like an early spring training game yeah, you're not, you don't know how the ball is going to come out of his hand you really don't know the velocity you can look from the side and say oh that guy throws pretty hard but Seen it out of his hands, see what the breaking ball comes, how it comes out of his hands, hard to do. How good are the scouting reports these days in terms of opposing pitchers? Well, every every game's on television. You talk to guys around the nation, around the country, and get to get to know them. I mean that but mainly just watching with the video. Yeah, video and but but you're right. Summer ball, you get an idea. Sometimes you see a guy that you oh I remember facing yeah. him in summer. Or you have a friend that plays on that team saying, well, tell me about your guy here, you know. One-two to Hibbler. Make it two-two. It's unusual being a Wednesday, too, guys. You heard Coach talk about it right there. Because these guys, all these relievers, are going to get one day off. But usually, they're if they pitch Tuesday, they got that couple of days to rejuvenate. Because ultimately, you have to protect your pitcher going in for a conference games. I mean, yeah, I mean, we got that big horse Isaiah Campbell that goes on Friday nights for him. So yeah. might be able to let a guy go in a few extra pitches during the week. Knowing you got that horse on Fridays. Full count for Hibbler.
And don't forget, Matt Cronin got one of the top closers in college baseball. So he's ready if the situation calls for it. At this point in time, Arkansas did not have to use him last night. Sometimes you, those meaningless innings for closers end up being disastrous. Hard. Why is that? Well, that doesn't mean, I mean, you're, you're, you're a closer. You're, you want to come out there and save the game. And depending on the score, if it's 10 0 or 11 2, it's just hard to get it going. I saw a stat one time where you were with Chapman. Roll this. It, when he was in a safe situation and a not safe situation, the ZRA is like five, <laughs> five full runs higher. And unhittable when it is a safe situation. Full count to Mason Hibbler. Lands forward on first to right field. Gets down in front of Kerstad. Ford will stop at second. Back-to-back -back base hits by Ford and Hibbler. Oh, that's a good at bat. As you talked about, Hibbler has really come on up in the leadoff spot. Did his, fought off a lot of pitches, saw a lot of pitches, went with the ball the other way when he's swinging it well, he hits the ball to right field. For me, this is a bunt situation. It's, uh, yes, you're thinking, well, you're down four. Uh, hey, move the guys up. It's, get a, it's a third inning. Hey, get it, get guys into scoring position and Find a way to scratch one out, win the inning. Arkansas. Go back to Coach Garrido used to talk about just just win the inning, get some momentum on your side. Arkansas expecting it with Nesbitt way in at third. Now he takes it one step back. He's got to go. He can't get too far away. Lance Ford take third. Alice shows. That's called a strike. Yeah, I saw the reaction from Duke Ellis. I'm not sure. He framed it back to the paint of the batter's box. Still called a strike. That's down by Ellis. He's got great wheels. The player's rush was his foot off the bag, though. It looked like the foot may have come off the bag from Jack Kinley. That was bang, bang over there at first. It looked like he was searching for the bag. Got a late break getting over there and a double pump right there. Ooh, look, usually when they go back to try to find the base, it just looks like he's on it right yeah. there and then he gets his and foot out of the came way. Came off. So Kenley got to the bag, then got out of the way, and they want to make sure he found it again. Here's Austin Todd with two in scoring position. He was up in the first with Duke Ellis on second. Could not cash in. Yeah, you want to drive on both ends, but right now you can hit a ground ball and get you a run. Texas looking to get on the board. Absolutely. Let's get something going. The only place is first base that you're not going to be able to score. I don't know if Ezell down there is expecting to bunt or what, but he's way in. Yeah, he's 88 feet from home plate. I think Austin Todd's going to be punting. An inside strike. It's 1 2. Crowded. And Todd goes two down. They get frustrated on the pitch before call, and then this one, you start forward, you see it. Yeah, Barrel definitely cross the play. It's a proper call. So now it's up to Eric Kennedy to make something out of the back to back base knocks by Ford and Hibbler.
First time off, Kennedy retired with the ground out to second. That's a good curveball by Taylor. Tough on left, he starts out behind your head. And a big curveball, too. Best pitch of the at bat. Maybe right here. Inside, and it's 3 1 to Eric Kennedy. Hibbler on second, Ford on third. Texas trying to get something on the board. Keep up with the Hogs. Throwing the curveball better than the fastball. More consistent yes. in the zone. Fastball misses a spot and it's a walk. Bases loaded for Zach Zubia. No pressure. Texas is a swing away from tying this thing up. Zubia certainly has the power to do that. Two home runs for Zubia this season. A lot of hard outs as well. Strike one from Evan Taylor. Again, as a hitter, I would not have anticipated a fastball because he's been inconsistent with it. That's one thing that this Arkansas staff, from what we've seen, from the pitchers so far last night and tonight, they can command the inner half of yeah. right handed hitters. Hit Inside, it. it gets away from Plunkett and it hits Zubia. So a run scores. Texas is on the board. Now, if you're Texas, you'll take them any way you can get them. Yeah, absolutely. Get on the board. Still with a chance to do more damage. And a knock right here. You're looking at a great opportunity. Kennedy with his speed at second base. Get making this a one-run game. Alpha plays deep. So yeah, with his speed, should be no problem. Reynolds foul ball right side. Third time off for Reynolds with the bases loaded. It's one for two in this scenario. Got lots of options if you're Greg. You've seen him foul off, be a little tardy on two late fastballs. You can climb the ladder with the fastball or bounce the breaking ball here. He tried to get the one down to Zach, just got it too far in on his back foot. See if he can, he can drop the curveball right on the plate right here. Looks like he wants to go up. There's the spot. See, one, two. See Plunkett back there, get up in his oh, crouch yeah. a little high. He wanted that fastball up.
good job of hanging in there right there. That was a tough pitch. I think Uncle Charlie may be coming here soon, though. Wednesday night in Austin, Texas. Bases loaded for the Longhorns. Two outs and Ryan Reynolds facing a one-two count from Evan Taylor. Oh, that was close. Reynolds did not go. Two balls, two strikes. Well, that's a good location for that breaking ball. Hard to lay off of. Another one missing inside, full count. Nowhere to put Ryan Reynolds. That's it. Advantage right here, a base hit will score two for sure. Kennedy will have a running lead to everybody in motion here. Put in the right spot. Down the lines to the wall, Big Zach to score for first. Easy. Texas has got its first two runs of this second game against Arkansas. Now put the ball in play. Zubia was hit. Reynolds drew the walk. Jacob Burton getting warm. Here's Tate Shaw, who simply has found a way to deliver this season. Can he do it again? Big wave. And it's 0-1. Well, we highlighted Tate in the open. I'd like to see the 14 RBIs. Only 43 at bats on the year. Evan Taylor painting. <laughs> Trying to get Shaw to chase that one outside. Does not go. One, two. Pops it up to left field. Christian Franklin is there, makes the catch, and a big out there for Evan Taylor. The Longhorns get two on the board with a hit by pitch and a walk. The eyes of now on the board. They had the bases loaded. Got a hit by pitch and a walk to make it four to two. Longhorns now cutting that deficit in half. And as we go to the top of the fourth, new pitcher for the Longhorns is Nico O'Donnell coming out of the bullpen. Churchill boy. San Antonio Churchill making his sixth appearance, struggle with command on the year. With the ten walks in the seven innings. One with six hits. Nico, good fastball over the top, breaking ball. Like a lot of the pitchers out of the bullpen, I mean, lately, just looking. For consistency with strikes. But won the inning, momentum back on your side, but boy, it's another big inning where you want to throw a zero up here, right? And you got the top of the order due for the Razorbacks as well. Casey Barton will lead off, followed by Hessen Kerstad and Trevor Ezel. Let's not forget that 
Razorbacks le left the bases loaded last night. Yeah. They did. Big double play. And a stressful inning for Mason Bryant, but he was able to get out of it. A few batters going to full counts. As Christian Franklin grounded a ball with the bases loaded to third base. Reynolds stepped on the bag through to first to get the Longhorns out of that jam unscathed. First pitch is a strike to Casey Martin. O'Donnell did not pitch against Texas Tech. We last saw him midweek against Texas Southern. Went one inning, struck out two, but walked two. A lot of times that's that's tough for pitchers, especially relief pitchers. You don't know when you're going to pitch. You don't pitch for a weekend. You stay after the games and throw light, flat grounds, maybe a little bit off the mound just to keep yourself sharp. Eight walks, though. In his last four innings pitched. One, two. Now close to Casey Martin. I'm not sure if any batter truly feels comfortable getting hit by a pitch this season. As Martin is down on strikes. Chased one upstairs from Nico, first of the night for Texas pitching. Martin 0 for 3. Brings up Heston Kerstad. Kerstad 0 for 2, reached on an error. It's back in the second inning. Lifted to center field. Hibbler trying to help Kennedy locate it. He finds it. There's two down. Yeah, that's that time of night, twilight. Kennedy for a second couldn't find it. You saw Ellis. He was <laughs> he threw on the, the Jets trying to figure out if he could get over to help out and then all of a sudden Kennedy found it. Big moon tonight. Ooh, look at that moon. to Trevor Ezell. Two for two on the night. Don't want to fall behind this guy. The one direction right now that you can see the ball getting out of the ballpark is down that right field line. Staying in the stretch, I, I would think if, if you're struggling, Greg, with repeating a release spot, it, I think that's great for young pitchers. I, I think you go to the stretch because you should be able to repeat that easier than the windup. Yeah, it's, it's very easy because you can get to your balance point right there a lot easier. And then the other part of that is on flat ground, you could do the same thing too. Just come set when you're throwing on the you know just playing catch with your because all these relievers they play catch and stretch out before the game that's when they get their arm loose well hit right field it gets down foul I saw a base knock for the Razorbacks last night on the very outside part of the paint down the left field line as 
as foul as it could be fair, if you will. And that came back to the line at the last minute, too. Full count. Ezell staying alive, fouls it off himself. I didn't feel good. He's had ball six up there. He's, he's hacking that he's, one to coming in yeah. there. He wants to hit, man. Yeah. Give me something. These razor bags are aggressive. Full count, two outs for Nico O'Donnell. That was just a little high. Not even Ezell's going to chase that one. We'll take his walk. Low ball hitter. Need that to be on stilts. <laughs> that to be downstairs. It's going to bring up Dominic Fletcher. Fletcher 0 for 2. Had a couple of doubles last night in the 11 4 win for the Razorbacks. Arkansas 3 0 in SEC play. Opened up with a three game sweep against the Missouri Tigers. Excellent pitching from the Arkansas staff. Timely hitting as well as Opitz won that final game on Sunday with a walk off single. And the other part of that is we mention all the time when you're all over the place it's hard to get pitches call strike that are close. Ezell's a good base runner eight for eight and stolen bases. Well, that's a good running count right here. Should be in motion. And he is fouled off. Now Shaw will be behind him at first base now. No sense holding him here. This one gets McCann and oh. Gary Johnson. Double whammy. Shaw will come closer to the runner up first. Will not hold him on. Ezell is off. Ball is ripped to right field. Ezell is going to score. And a two out RBI double for Dominic Fletcher, his third double of the series and 11th of the season. This really does a nice job clearing his front side. Runner in motion. It's that extension. Hand comes off. But you can see the barrel of that bat really whips through that zone and keeps it fair into the corner. And with Izell in motion, no chance to get him at the plate. Called the Hogs here in Austin. Jordan McFarland fouls off the first offering from O'Donnell. Check swing. He goes to make it 0-2. Talked about the importance of those two out hits a little earlier, Keith. And it's a really nice at bat there from Dominic Fletcher, someone that's really impressed you. Well, good offensive clubs find a way to score. With two outs and nobody on. Well, what do we have here for Arkansas? Two outs, earn a walk, get to a 3 2 count. And Fletcher with a runner in motion, 
into the corner just like that you find a way to score with two outs and nobody on and all these runs by Arkansas they've been preceded by a free pass a walk setting up Fletcher that second inning out for is a hit by pitch O'Donnell gets a strikeout there Arkansas adds another talk to David Pierce when we return The Longhorns, David Peterson, Texas, is trying to mount a comeback here. Coach, thanks for joining us. First off, what are you seeing from the offensive execution to this point? Well, we've hit a couple of balls really hard. We just got to put them together. We got an opportunity last inning, and, uh, you know, we scratched out a couple. So they got some tough pitching, so we just got to keep grinding, keep scratching. Coach, uh, a game, a Wednesday game, you know, you're not used to playing those. You're looking for that guy to come out of the bullpen, kind of take the bull by the horn. Yeah, we need somebody just to, to really create some tempo and attack the strike zone. That's really what we're looking for. You're right. Coach, we appreciate the time. Okay, guys. Could have said grab the hogs by the tusk. tusk. Yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Tusk. Oh, we're going to have some mascot trivia. Tusk is the and live so, mascot for the Arkansas Razorbacks, yes. You want to save it? Or, or now? Let's talk about Jacob Burke right here. Six foot freshman out of Texas. Look at mid 90s fastball. Really good stuff. Fastball, curveball, slider. Oh, comes right after you. Numbers aren't where he wants them, but got a live arm. Ooh. So, two years ago, we really started the tradition of having you break down the opposing mascot right. very in depth it was my favorite part of the broadcast yeah but Keith gets very angry if you talk about anything that's not directly baseball related so we went away from it last season like sweep socks you don't like talking oh, about no, it's that. a sweep socks that's ridiculous now, launch mascot, angle you, you would you rather talk about launch angle or mascots I'd rather talk about mascots and okay. launch angle then let's go with the mascots it's back well Tusk tell tusk, us about it. Tusk is Him or her the, well, they're all they're boars, so they're they're, okay. they're male. Okay. Yeah, Russian boars. Tus five starts out little bitty guy. I saw him on, on oh, the internet. Geez. Little bitty boar will start out the football season this year. Take over for Tusk four, who's there right now. Lives on a ranch in Dardendale, Dardendale, Arkansas. Stokes family raises them. Russian boars. They boar got an zone. indoor and outdoor facility. They do a nine thousand square foot indoor and a seven thousand square foot outdoor. You've been doing some research. <laughs> He's trying to steal your thunder. Yeah. Uh -oh. Austin Todd wears that one. Excuse me, Michael McCann. And that is the last guy Texas wants to see get hit. Think he got him on his forearm. 94 mile per hour fastball running into Michael McCann. Looks like he's okay. We can resume. And all, all the tusks, the live, the live Razorbacks, all have come from the same lineage, same family. They got their name way back at the turn of the century, 1909, when Hugo Bezdek told a group of fans at the train station that the football team played like a wild band of Razorback hogs. Okay. Name stuck. That's how they became yeah. the Razorbacks. I can see that. They got a baseball specific. Really? Can you guess? Diamond Hawk. No, Ribby. 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 I like hey, it. Like that? That's the one that the, the bad, the one that puts the unit, the mascot uniform on. They also have Big Red. Wait, 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 wait. What? Okay, is this like a costume mascot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, in my in my mind, I saw a Russian boar running around. No, like with a, a real... baseball uniform on, and then felt sorry for the person. It was in charge of dressing. No, no, no. Those rush because those this, things will get you and they'll rip you apart. They, oh yeah, they're mean. No, this is this is a human okay. with a mascot union. They also Ribby. they also have big red. Ribby is the baseball specific. Yeah, yeah. Then they have a female. You know how they call the pig Sue? You know, this female's pig is Sue E. Middle initial E. E. Okay. Yes. And then of course they have. The one for the children. Pork chop. Pork chop. So there's the first edition of 2019. Has Bevo ever met 
one of these mascots. Ooh, I don't, I don't, like, I don't, like, I don't, like I don't know. Like Nudo and Ugga. I don't That's know. Right. Ugga. I don't know if those two could hook up. Probably want to mix well. It, it was he, almost he might a be disaster. Okay. He, he with might, Ugga. he might be okay with Tusk Five because Tusk Five's a little smaller than Ugga right now. Two free passes. Longhorns in business. Yeah. Van Horn on his way out. <laughs> seen enough. We want this boys. We ain't messing around. Young man's got a great arm. He's just got to find a way to yeah. command the strike zone. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you have that kind of arm, you want you want to be able to bottle it up. He will. Just a freshman. We'll be back to talk about the new pitcher. Horns with two on and no outs. I do. So Texas back in this one. Scored two runs in the third and here in the bottom of the fourth. They have their lead off two on as Michael McCann was hit. Lance Ford followed up, drawing a walk. That chased Jacob Burton from the game. So Liam Henry becomes the fourth Arkansas pitcher tonight. Only his fourth appearance. Fourth appearance. Hasn't walked anyone. Got a couple strikeouts for the freshman. Fastball curveball. Mid to upper 80s with that fastball. Coach Van Horn getting out of that dugout in a hurry. He doesn't want this th thing to get away. They got a three-run lead. Trying to keep it at that, but did say he's, he's going to run six or seven freshmen out there. And here we well, go. And, and sometimes it's what you're going to get. Uh, inconsistent with the strike zone. I think it was the mascot trivia. They got Texas. Right. Get, we have to keep got talking about it. If we could keep the rally going. If we... What else do you got? You're out. Your notebook paper ran out. No more lines in there. You're, you're thinking. You're trying to figure out. <laughs> we can talk about Tux one or two, or three, four. They do have an inflatable too called Big Red. No, what's his name? Boss Hog. Boss Hog. Big inflatable. I've always wondered, is there someone in the inflatable ones? Boss Hog. But is there someone in there? Okay. Hibbler briefly showing bunt, pulls it back, 1-0. Huge opportunity for Mason Hibbler here. Came into this month hitting 083. But he is the reigning Big 12 player of the week for his production primarily in that series win against Texas Tech. So his bump pulls it back again, 2-0. Drove in three runs in the Sunday win against the Red Raiders, scored another. I still got a bunt here. I know the count's in your favor. You got something going right here. Get two guys in the scoring well, position. It's not a bad call to fake bunt take yeah. right here. It's just because you, you get the defense moving around. You got a young lefty on the mound. Hibbler popping it up. Third baseman Jacob Nesbitt is there. They chased one out of the zone right there. Got the green light on the 2-0 and chased one up out of the zone. Better find some more mascot trivia. Find it quick. Here's Duke Ellis. He had the first base hit for the Longhorns tonight. Double to center field in the first. Texas was unable to bring him home. An outside strike from Liam Henry. A lot of movement. Arms, glove. Gets past Plunkett. Plunkett cannot make a throw as McCann and Ford both move up. Two runners now in scoring position for Ellis. That's what you have to do. You read that ball in the dirt. As soon as it hit the dirt, Michael McCann saw the carom. He took off. Lance Ford followed. It's that catcher vision. He knows what he's looking for. Nesbitt still in. Oh. Good eight or ten feet at third base. Both the corners are in. 
Henry is getting those outside strikes. Infield moves back now with two strikes. This is how to make it 2 2. Craig, I've heard you say it a million times. Sometimes you try to make it break, it's when it hangs up there. Yeah, you force it. You, you tense up instead of relaxing, letting the grip take care of everything. Arkansas is trying to help Texas get back in this game. The last seven batters faced three walks, two hit batters, and one wild pitch. They scored two runs with the bases loaded last inning. Zubia was hit. Ryan Reynolds drew a walk. Shaw then flew out. Canellas come through. Popped up. Trying to blow this out of play, and it gets there. Ellis will stay alive. down on strikes two down not a location Henry wanted but it, it worked out for him it came in the inner half of the plate and Duke did all he could do trying to fight it off right there yeah. you got an open base here Todd at the plate and a left-handed hitter hitting behind him see how Razorbacks want to play this Todd is struck out twice. Looks at ball one. Texas needs to come through in this situation. Yeah, two out way. hits. You gotta, gotta find a way to start getting some two out hits. Could not get it done with the bases loaded. Trying to do so here after McCann was hit. Ford drew a walk to get the first two hitters on for Texas. Hasn't been close with the first two. I would not be surprised to see breaking ball here. Went with the fastball. Whenever they want to go with the fastball, they've all they go in on right handers. That was a good fastball in the inner half. Two strikes on top. Now as a hitter, you don't know what's coming. You can climb the ladder back again with the fastball, or you can come right back to that breaking ball. He's got two opportunities, too, at a 2-2 count. Just freeze him up in. Full count. And it gets past. McCann will score. How about that? Plunkett threw it over Liam Henry. McCann heads up base running, and it's 5-3. Like I said, Arkansas is trying to help Texas get back in this game. Well, he almost threw a one-hopper back to him earlier in the at-bat. That one right there just sails right over. Heads up down there by Michael McCann to, no doubt. to recognize. Catcher understanding. Full we'll count, two outs to Austin Todd. Ford on second. Up the middle. Martin is there. Texas gets another run, courtesy of an Arkansas miscue. Still down by two. The Arkansas defense not helping the cause here. Over the head of the pitcher, McCann scores.
Clinton is 90 feet away from tying this game up. Popped up. It's tough play. Nobody gets it. Wow. Three guys had a chance at it. Hit and throw. We are tied. And the pop up that Arkansas couldn't catch leads us to this. Gets one to hit. Drives it to right. This one is gone. And Oregon State roars to the top here in the night. Heartbreak last season in Omaha for the Diamond Hogs. Our ninth trip to the College World Series quite nearly led to the first CWS title in program history. There was that foul ball. If that was caught, that was it. Game two was done in the championship series. And Dave Van Hort will have his first D1 national championship, the first for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Instead, Oregon State came back to win that game two. Now the dominating pitching performance against the Arkansas lineup in game three. The Beavers went on to win that College World Series. So close. You know, you go back and look at that, too. Uh, there's a lot of teams that have, have been right there, but foul, a fly ball. I think it's, it, it's crushing in the sense that, yeah, you catch a fly ball and, and you win. Yeah, Oregon State still had to come back and do what they did. But you're going to catch that 99 out of 100 times. You, you can't fault anyone in that situation. I mean, they were all converging. Just didn't seem like there was much communication. Yeah, going it, on. And, and plus, you know, obviously it's a packed house and yeah. you're sprinting trying to get to it. And it. it TD or Ameritrade has huge foul huge. ground. Huge. That one is off Kenley. He'll take first. That's, that's, that's a fastball right there. He's throwing good breaking balls. And struggling with your command with the fastball. It's just a fastball low at the foot. seeing backs of bullpens struggling with command on both sides. So three walks and two hit batters by the Texas pitchers tonight. Kubacek got the start. Bryant came in in relief. And now O'Donnell. Almost a wild throw to first. And here comes David Pierce. Makes the immediate call to the bullpen. And the night is done for Nico O'Donnell. Here comes Mateo Boki. Take a quick break here in Austin. The start of the Mike White era. That hit the free taco sign. That ball is smashed. Every time a vacation day interrupts a work day, a corona gets its line. Austin, Texas, sights, the sounds, one of the greatest cities in America. Yeah, we're a little biased on that. Oh, come on. A lot of people think, come here, though. Well, a lot of people do come here, but I, 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 I believe you. Ask Mateo Boki. He knows, he knows Boki Midland, and he knows Austin. <laughs> Well, he knows Parma, Italy, too. I'm talking about it. Oh, States. over here, yeah, over, yeah, here. over here. Oh, over here. Over here. Making the seventh appearance of the season. He is the fourth pitcher for the Longhorns tonight. There's one runner on first base as Kenley was hit by O'Donnell. And this is a critical situation because Texas has not played great. But Arkansas has given them a glimmer of hope, a chance to get a series split here got to take advantage of this well they you know both teams are struggling with command so you heard coach Pierce talk about when we talked to him that he was looking for somebody just to come in and attack the zone try to get some quick outs use your defense I mean we haven't seen ground balls with a man on first try to get any double plays I think Arkansas will be running here
seven through nine in this lineup, six through nine, excuse me, has reached seven of eight times. The safe to squeeze RBI. Three runs, three driven in by the bottom of the lineup for the Razorbacks. A motion over at first base. Can we stay and put? As this is Jacob Nesbitt. A couple of singles tonight. First one. Drove in the first run of the game for the Razorbacks. Foul ball makes it one and two. Arkansas with seven hits, five runs. Texas three hits, three runs. The way Texas has scored their runs, though, an error on the catcher overthrowing the pitcher. McCann coming in from third, and then with the bases loaded, a hit batter, and another walk. That one nearly got away from Michael McCann. Concerning moment when we saw McCann get hit. Because after him, it's just cast and Peter. It's a wave and a miss by Nesbitt. Mateo going way out of the zone right there. Good, I guess now with the arm angle, it's more of a, a slur, a frisbee type. Yeah. Doesn't have tremendous depth on it, but started it out, broke it out of the zone. There's Plunkett. You don't see that as much as you used to. Guys wanting a new baseball. You got a ball felt in your hand. Sometimes you had to think, oh, this doesn't feel good. I'm going to get another one. They, they actually are different sizes. They're not supposed to be, but you can feel. Fair ball. Backhand from Reynolds. Shaw tried to come off the base, couldn't secure it. Tough play for Reynolds to make. And almost came up with another gem over a third. I would like some time to see on plays like that. Yeah, you have a good arm, but use that long, use the turf. Use that long hop off the turf. Keep it on line easier. It's easier to catch down there. And you... He made a great effort to get to the ball. But you're right. He, he, if you get rid of it quickly, especially, you can use the long hop. They call that air? Call that a base hit. Yeah. Okay. Christian Franklin has driven in five against the Longhorns, four of them off the Grand Slam last night. One on a single up the middle to make it 3 0. Bokey trying to collect himself, regain that focus, as after this, it's the dangerous trio of Martin, Kerstad, and Ezel. Top of the lineup coming up for the Hogs. 2-0. And it's three balls, no strikes to Christian Franklin. Don't want to mess around with this part of the lineup. Do up. 12 for 24 with runners in scoring position. Not bad for the number nine hitter. There's strike one. Obviously, the bottom of this lawyer has done pretty well. He is the leading RBI guy with 24. So what helps you when you hit a grand slam. And <laughs> so he's hit had five ribbies, as you talked about in this series. We take the grand uh, slam away, and he's still the leader by one against uh, with Casey Martin. Three one to Christian Franklin. Full count.
up the middle. Here comes Ford. Makes a play in time. Runners move up, but there's two down. You're only in the fifth inning, but the way this game's gone to this point, this is a big at bat for Martin and Arkansas because Texas has gathered a little momentum here. Huge opportunity to get an out and get out of this. The last time Texas got some momentum, Arkansas answered with one. Trying to do the same right here. Quickly 0-2 to Casey Martin. Got to be ready to bounce around if you're Michael McCann right here. Put that slider away. Got to be able to block it, keep it in front of you. Don't want to give give them any. Two hundred pitches tonight by both teams. 200 total. <laughs> 201 is the strikeout Bokey needed. The Hogs put two on, but Texas gets out of it. Kennedy, Zubia Reynolds, two up. Come. Going to the bottom of the fifth, Arkansas with a 5 3 lead over Texas. Arkansas has spread out the scoring, hasn't absolutely clobbered the ball, but has just placed it perfect, uh, perfectly. The score there, five runs. Colby Kubitschek got the start, three earned runs against him. He went one and two thirds. For Texas, Lance Ford has a hit, scored a run as well. And Texas has gotten the help, frankly, to score their three runs. As Eric Kennedy leads off, they had the bases loaded. They got a hit batter. Zubia was plunked. That scored a run. Reynolds followed by getting walked. Ouch. And there's another hit batter off the dome of Kennedy. And this is what we're talking about, though. Arkansas is almost allowing Texas to stay in this game because the third run scored was an overthrow from Plunkett to the pitcher, Liam Henry. It's a fastball right off the back of the helmet. Just a glancing blow. Doesn't sound, sound like say it. again. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't sound glancing to me. Like Eric is okay. And he got some momentum. Got a base runner here. Could really change this game if you could find a way to get get the lead here. Well, they like Lola said they're trying to give it to him. Well, yeah, take advantage I, of it. Got to get a hit with yes. someone on base. There's Zubia. Men's slowing almost to nothing right now. So Texas got the back to back singles by Ford and Hibbler in the third after they were on. No hits. And McCann and Ford. Hit and walked. No hits after that. Until that overthrow to the pitcher. To third base, and that's off Nesbitt. <laughs> Zubia hit it hard. It has some top spin on it. Right off that brown turf, it really took off. Got yeah, second hop. And E5. That's a tough play coming in hot on Jacob Nesbitt. Dave Van Horn, seen enough. He's going to flip Ryan Reynolds around left handed. I mean, this is a bunt. This is a bunt situation here. Down two. Bottom of the fifth inning, guys. And in that scenario for me, 
easier for a left hander to push that bunt than as a right hander to, to hook it down the third baseline. I don't know if you I, what you do, but he's going to make the move and go to the bullpen. Well, Texas now has something cooking. We've seen this, though. Go back to the first inning where Duke Ellis has a single, or excuse me, a double to center field. After he gets on with one out, Texas is not able to get him home. Texas then loads the bases. They score a couple after a hit batter and a walk, but still with the bases loaded, not able to produce a hit to get another runner home. So really, Arkansas has helped them at one of these points in time, though, Zeke, I mean, Texas is going to have to do it on their own to come through. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, whether Texas is pitching. You walk plenty enough. Yeah. All, all it takes is a hit here or there. Texas hasn't been able to come up with that one, but right now, this situation, you, you got to get the bunt down. You have an opportunity now to tie this game, maybe take the lead in this inning, but still looking, for, still looking for the big hit. Yeah. Well, they, haven't big, they haven't had one of those in a while. In a big game for both these programs. Yeah. At this point in time, the strength of schedule for Texas is outstanding. This is in that this of a 17-game stretch in which they play 15 ranked teams. So Arkansas comes into this top 10. They didn't like the way it ended. Texas last night, 11 to 4 loss, but this salvages something out of the series, helps with the RPI and all the measurables, and also gives them something to feel good about going into the TCU series. Well, you just look at it going forward to the end of that stretch, TCU, and then obviously you got AM, another rival coming, Xavier in the middle, and then, oh, by the way, that we're not showing right there, the other part of this to me is the next road trip is Baylor, which was considered one of the top three teams in the conference as well. So uh, it doesn't get much easier once we get into the first of April. So let's get you an update on some of the changes to the scorecard here. That E5 changed to a base hit for Zach Zubia. And the new pitcher is Elijah Trest. Fifth pitcher tonight for the Razorbacks, freshman from White Oak, right here in the Lone Star State. Making his third appearance of the season. Another one of those freshmen for Coach Van Horn. Big arm, I mean, low 90s, 93 tops. Good slider. Like Coach Pierce, putting some arms out there and looking for that guy to throw strikes. So Kennedy on second, Zubia on first. You got Ryan Reynolds, Tate Shaw, Michael McCann do up. Reynolds with the ground out to second and a walk. That walk with the bases loaded. Scored the second run for the Longhorns. Reynolds shows bunt. Texas has been good in close games this season. 5-0 and in games decided by one run. Two of those coming against Texas Tech. One one. Texas spent a lot of time working on getting those bunts down. Execution. Before batting practice tonight. This isn't the one where you want to try to drag bunt it. You want to square around and get the ball on the ground. Right here. And if you possible, make the third baseman field it. Two one. Offensive timeout. Coach Allen. Two losses for the Razorbacks this season. One was extra innings on the road at USC. The other a 12 to 7 loss against Louisiana Tech. Best start for the Razorbacks since 2012. Reynolds fouls the bunt. And it's going to be 2-2. I saw this, I think, a couple weeks ago with Tate Shaw, where he was unable to get the bunt down. So with two strikes, he was swinging and ended up hitting a shot to the gap and driving in a couple. Working out. Yeah. 
not how you want to do it. But Reynolds will show Bunt with two strikes. Pulls it back and looks at strike three. That running fastball. Ran it on the outside corner, got the call. And the outer, outer. A fly out and a walk for Tate Shaw. Only Todd and Kennedy with more RBI for the Longhorns. On the 14 from Tate Shaw. Good hitters pitch coming right here. I mean, got a young guy, commands not a problem, but he hasn't walked a better, but he's only worked two and a third innings this season. 3-0 to Tate Shaw. is low four pitch walk loading the bases yet again Michael McCann all for one was hit his last time up Stands in with five driven in this season. First pitch ball from Elijah Trust. A little bit different throwing dinner squad. <laughs> yes, it is. Chop foul. Can two for his last 26. He's to find a hole right here. Gonna break out in a big way here. Base is loaded. <laughs> Lifted to center field. Dominic Fletcher is on it. Kennedy will tag from third. Here's the throw. Kennedy will beat it in time. Trust with the backup. Even though that throw sailed high. And it is a one run game. Young pitchers being in the right spot. We were talking about being in the right spot. I'm talking about Eric Kenny going head first into home. Catcher had to go up right there, almost came right down on his hand. I never like head first slide at the plate. Two outs now for the freshman, Lance Ford. You're coming forward. Coming in head first. Watch this. Oh. Tommy just misses getting yeah. that left hand. It's dangerous. Texas just chipping away at this Arkansas lead. What is need a two out knock? Four runs for the Longhorns. No RBI hits tonight. Scoring on a walk, hit by pitch, an error, and a sack fly. Trying to get three across right there. Healthy swing. I like it. 2 0 count. Let it go. Come out of his shoes.
another hardy hack from Ford. He's got a single up the middle. And has drawn a walk. Two out knocks. Texas needs some. Ford with only two driven in this season. 2-2. Two, two. And it's a full count. Well, again, advantage for Texas. It really will help Zubio on a base hit. Score. And anything into the gap, Shaw will score easily. Look out over the plate. Hasn't come in on him. Look out over the plate if he lands Ford. Lifted to the left side, Franklin camping under it, makes the play, so bases loaded, one out, and only one run allowed by the Razorbacks. I call that a win for Arkansas. Two, three, four, coming up. With it every... Welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. Going to the top of the six with Arkansas leading Texas five to four. Matt Whalen, new pitcher for the Longhorns. Be the fifth pitcher for Texas. Look at these, they've combined to use 10 pitchers, 13 free passes. Well, 224 total pitches Wow, tonight. Matt Whalen looking to come in. Kind of made a name for himself in Fayetteville last year. Came in relief. Got seven strikeouts. Did Matt Whalen. Well, he's making a name for himself this year. He's been really productive. He's a guy that's it's attacked the strike zone. Really I hit. think the development of his little breaking ball has helped him with the right-handed hitters. We kind of ride it the ship Sunday against Texas Tech before Josh Young had that home run. I mean, if you're going to give up a home run to somebody, I mean, it's Young's one of the first best player in America. Young's first of the year, yeah. First pitch ball, the Heston Kerstad. The guy with Josh Young type potential. Well, now you got to challenge him. Tried back to back change ups, missed with both, slowed up on the last one a little bit. Kerstan is reached on an error by Hibbler at short. And it's 3 0, and you can see Whalen expressing his frustration right into his mitt. Four pitch walk to Kerstad. How many free passes is that now? I'm gonna have to update that graphic. Getting out of hand. It's gonna bring up Trevor Ezel. Grad transfer from Southeast Missouri State. Squares to bunt. That's five straight balls. Fortunately, Texas A&M is not in town. No bubbles. Be hearing that chant. Uh. Kerstad thinking about it. McCann will keep him at first. And this is what has plague Texas pitchers 
especially early on in a consistent or innings. Consistency. It's, unexcus it's unexcusable. You've thrown enough now, you've been out there enough to be able to come in and get the ball over the plate. And there's the first strike by Whalen. Every time Arkansas has scored tonight, it's really been a free pass to start the tricky situation. Whalen coming off the mound, has to make the quick throw. Shaw is off the bat. This is a really good bunt. Still had a chance to get an out on it, but this is a well-placed bunt. Yeah, just deadens it out in front of the plate. Not a good jump off the mound right there from Whalen and then had to rush his throw. If he stays on the bag, he's out. No, nah, he loses the ball. But the ball came out. Yeah. E1. You have to give a sacrifice right. so it's not a time at bat. Sacrifice E1. Tate's moving in. I do not see Fletcher bunting right here. Three doubles already. And two nights for Dominic Fletcher. And the Arkansas fans hooping and hollering. Which team will take advantage of the charity work by the opposition here tonight? Yes. for a hit. <laughs> that wasn't a sacrifice attempt right there. No, he was bunting for a base hit. But still, I, I, right. I, I'm even. The way he's been swinging it yeah. these last two days. This guy's got an OPS 923. Another bunt attempt. Can take a little bit of a shot there. Hopefully, an umpire will slow it down and give McCann a moment. Dave Van Horn is saying, bunt the ball. Put it on the ground. <laughs> what I'm trying to get you to do right here. Don't be trying to do anything fancy. Two to Dominic Fletcher. And Fletcher down on strikes. So now you got the possibility of rolling a double play, getting out of this for Matt Whalen. Reminds you, if you go back to the bottom of the fifth, Texas had the first two guys on, couldn't get the bunt down, and then took a call third strike. Same scenario. David Pierce seen enough. He's already pointed towards the bullpen. At this point, I say we call Guinness Book of World Records and just see how many pitchers we can get out here tonight. Tristan Stevens will come in this ball game. And they're calling the hogs. 
And some of the Texas fans decide to get up and start the Texas fight chant to get a little back and forth going here. Tristan Stevens will be the new pitcher for the Longhorns. We'll be back in just a moment. Tristan Stevens is going to be pitcher number six for the Texas Longhorns. Critical situation yet again. We are in the top of the sixth inning. Stevens comes in. He's got Kerstad on second, Ezel on first, and only one out. Stevens making his eighth appearance of the season. And he, he's shown signs of, of, of pitching well off the of Tommy John, healthy. I think right here in this situation, he's he's got the good slider that you can possibly get that ground ball with right here and get out of the inning. Game simply could come down to who wants it more. Both these teams have had their opportunities. They've really failed to cash in with big hits. It's the DH Jordan McFarland standing in looking at ball one. First five pitches for Matt Whalen were balls this evening, uh, this e inning. So he came out of the bullpen. Here comes Reynolds on the run, two down. That's the pitch you wanted. You just got him to roll over it a little too much. Yeah, he fooled him too much. We've got an open base here right now. Jack Kinley has a ground roll double to his credit on the left field line. He's been hit and he's walked. So he's been a frequent base runner for the Razorbacks. <laughs> Two wild pitches. On the season for Tristan Stevens, can ill afford one now. Whoa. Watch out, Vinny. Gonna have quick hands over there. Needs Sean to get Al himself some Evo shots. Sean Allen cool as a cucumber. Yeah, didn't, didn't even flinch. Come on, Vinny. Could I have that one? He played on a hop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've had base runners, it seems, the entire ball game. And neither team to this point has really gotten that two out hit in this game. Yeah, the four runs in the second inning by Arkansas. A lot of seeing eye base hits. Just dumping it past defenders in the right place. Dominic Fletcher did have a two out double that drove in a run in the fourth. That was the fifth run for the Razorbacks. Well, Texas has held its ground, even with the free passes. One two to Jack Kinley. <laughs> to center. Ellis makes the grab, two left on. Five of the six, here we come. Himmler, Ellis, Todd, do up. Great start to the season by Florida State, but after opening up 12 and 0, a loss to Central Florida drops the Seminoles to two and five in their last seven games. Liberty upsetting North Carolina. 
as Liberty 4-0 against the ACC this season. And Hayden Cantrell hit for the cycle last night against Northwestern State. Also had a three home run game earlier this season. So I'd say Cantrell is making a name for himself. Yeah, okay. really struggled in the opening series against Texas for the Raging Cajuns, but it's been hot as a pistol since. Top of the lineup for Texas, Mason Hibbler. First pitch swinging as Elijah Tress is back on the bump. A little more work for the Razorbacks. Arkansas back into SEC play this weekend. They've got a road trip to Tuscaloosa to take on Alabama. Kibler through the hole on the right side, leadoff single. All right, we've seen this, right? We've seen Texas get the runners on. That's a good swing right here on a slider away, down and away. Hibbler starting to see the ball, feeling it, goes with it the other way. That is perfect execution when you're anticipating that slider away. Second hit of the night. He's got two of the five, does Mason Hibbler. So now can Texas make something out of it with balls put in play? Here's Duke Ellis showing bunt, pulls it back. I roll the dice. I, I take it. I put a hit and run on or something right here. You haven't, switch seen it up. you haven't seen Texas run? No, no. Just switch it up a little bit. Another bunt attempt, and it's 1 1. Zellers did not like that pitch. It's been called. He's been, he's been consistent out there with it, as Jerry Johnson. Now. Nesbitt even moving further up towards home plate. So none of these four runs by the Longhorns driven in off base hits. Hibbler goes, slapping it to the left side is Ellis. Something new. Switch it up a little bit right there, just a pitch later. Hibbler getting his signs on the way back to first from Sean Allen over at third base. Hibbler stays put. Ellis down swinging. I think when, when you come out early, as a team and, and you work on bunning you've got to take it serious that's three times tonight texas has been and unsuccessful to execute even trying to get the bunt down they haven't put one in play todd has struck out twice tonight it's grounded out to shortstop Right at once, you, you got to try something to get Mason Hibbler into scoring position. That ball is skipped. Plunkett keeps it in front. He's the old chest protector. That ball hit out there about 56 feet. That's one that you might have had a chance, but you had to be anticipating that. Yeah. Yeah. You had to be anticipating it right off the bat. That We've seen some good arms. We've seen some guys that have some stuff that you can see why they're just young. Inability to throw enough strikes with them. You know, they're all freshmen. They still got a couple more years. Yeah. Seven freshmen for Arkansas. And they pitch. Seven for the Longhorns as well. Work it away. That's strike two on Austin Todd. Texas two for 13 with runners on. Olford on with runners in scoring position. That's what they would like Kibler to get into. He's on first base, tried to put him in motion with a hit and run. With Duke Ellis up. Could not execute that. Failed to get the bunt down numerous times tonight. 
But this is where Texas has excelled, finding ways to win close ball games. 5 0 this season in one run games. Hibbler fakes the steal. And it's 2 2 on Austin Todd. Five hits tonight by the Longhorns. Off the middle, here's Martin. Will flip to second, the bare hand. That's going to go over the head of Ezel, but great job by Martin and Kinley to get one. Yeah, get that lead runner. Kinley tried to make a throw, but. Martin aware right here as you can see as he gets he's in front he just takes some make sure you get that one and Henley tried to make a great play almost allowed the runner to score in position anyway. Look, maybe for a second that Martin might have wanted to take it himself but then was a little too far in front of the bag. Yeah thought about flipping and then got it out of his glove in time. Texas now two for 14 with runners on base. Sarah Kennedy comes up, grounded out to second. It's been hit and has drawn a walk. Hit the back of the helmet. It was a loud one. Take a rip at it right here. Is that term effectively wild? When guys are all over the place, it's hard to get comfortable in there. To get a good rip at something. Inside, three balls, no strikes to Eric Kennedy. Green light. Nah. Yeah, I think you got to take it too. That big Zach on deck. He can leave the yard as well. Put more pressure on him with more base runners. Four pitch walk to Eric Kennedy. Zach Zubia coming up. The runner in scoring position. Second, Kennedy on first, so great speed on the bases for the Longhorns. First pitch strike from Elijah Trust. Trust came in last inning, high leverage situation. Bases were loaded with only one out. Got a sack fly to center. And a fly out to get out of the jam, only allowed one. Here in the six, it was a leadoff single to Mason Hibbler. Struck out Ellis. Cut down Hibbler. The ground ball off the bat of Austin Todd. Kennedy walked. Zach Zubia now with an opportunity, but down 0-2. Tress trying to make him chase, and Zubia not taking the bait. Fish aren't biting? No, sir. Wins out of the east. Nice. That fish won't bite. <laughs> Look at one of that one behind the plate. Well, that's the one that starts out as a hitter and it sort of freezes you. Come back enough. He's seen four straight sliders from Tress. 
to the right side. It gets through. Here comes Todd. He will score. Kennedy motoring to third. And the game is tied up at five. Zubia delivers. There's the hit you were looking for. Two out base, Two out. base hit. Went back to the slider once again. Did Tress. This one just stayed over the inner half. Zach did a good job of fighting it off. Didn't hit it hard. Placed it out there perfect. First RBI base hit of the night for the Longhorns. May have whittled away the lead. Nodded up at five runners on the corners, two outs for Reynolds. Outside ball one. Good action up in the Razorback bullpen. The lefty up, Caden Monk. Caden Monk. Gonna get a fastball right here. Texas has not led in this series. Upstairs, three balls, no strikes. Gonna bring up Shaw, and there's a lefty up and ready to go in the Arkansas bullpen. Loaded with two outs. And you can see Trest is looking into the dugout, waiting for this move to happen. And here comes Dave Van Horn. Tenth free pass issued by the Arkansas pitching staff. Seven walks, three hit batters. And approaching that 300 pitch mark, aren't we? We gotta be getting close. For the third time tonight, Texas says the base is loaded. They have not put together a base hit with the bases loaded. Got a hit batter and a walk to score two. Got a sack fly by Michael McCann to score another. And they're trying to break through here. Tied up. At five, Zach Zubia delivering with two outs. Going to the right side to tie it up at five. Caden Monk comes in with the bases loaded and two outs. The freshman from Mount Olive, Illinois, standing in at 6'3, 160. Fastball, curveball, changeup for Monk. Right now, his one, his one job is to come in and get this lefty out. That lefty is Tate Shaw. Tater. Tater has been walked twice tonight as a fly out to left field. Third inning, Texas has the bases loaded. Looking for the first base hit with them loaded. Take a strike here. That's I, I, the I think the fresh, his ERA is, is, is got the way up there. I don't know if his command is good, so I make the freshman throw me a strike. I, I, One but, inning of work. He's only, if, he's walked two batters. But if he, he throws you that first pitch cookie, oh, that was it. 
Strike one to Shaw. Good location, though. Outside. Termination on Monk's face. Slows that one down. And misses, and it's one ball, one strike. Upstairs. With each ball, each strike gets harder to throw. It does. Especially with Longhorns everywhere. Comes back for the second strike, 2-2. Two -two. Painted him up again on the outside half. If you go breaking ball here at 2-2, I think you're gonna come back with a 3-2. Not that fast, bro. No, sir. Full count. How many times have we said that tonight? A few. Full count, two outs. Everybody will be in motion as the dish is coming to life. I'm gonna try a breaking ball. If you get it close, you're gonna get him out. Not even close with the fastball. Texas takes the lead on the walk. The third time they've scored tonight on a free pass with the bases loaded. They'll take it. And still loaded for Michael McCann. Last time up, sack fly to center field, scored a run. We'll have to do that with a base hit now. Strike one from Caden Monk. He's painted three fastballs and hasn't been close with the rest of them. Big swing by McCann. single right here. The two runs in this thing. First lead Texas has had in any of the last four meetings against Arkansas back the second game in the last year. It went up 2 nothing in the first inning. Razorbacks took all three of the series, the games last season. That gets in close to McCann. Did not get him, though. Well, it would have hit him, it would have hit him on the bounce. That ball bounced about 55 feet again. A really nice job of keeping that ball in front. Hogs took all three last season. Took one last night here in Austin. Texas trying to turn that around. Crowd here at UFCU Dish Falk Field. It's been a slow crescendo. Saving it up for this moment. Hit this time it hits McCann. And another free pass with the bases loaded. That's now four runs off hit batters or walks with the bases loaded for the Longhorns. 
What is happening inside this stadium where neither team can throw strikes? We're seeing a lot of inexperienced young arms come in the game. It's a high pressure situation. It's two ranked teams going at it. I'm talking all season long. Oh. I mean, going back to the LSU series and the, the problems the Tigers had here. Base is loaded for Lance Four. First pitch strike from Caden Monk. Outside, Plunkett working hard. Michael McCann been taking a beating this year. He's he is, a man of steel. He is a man of steel right now. Strike two to four. So three innings now. Bases loaded. No base hits with the bases loaded. But they have scored multiple runs it's just bizarre 12 free passes issued by the arkansas pitching staff and it's 2-2 two -two. so five runs with the bases loaded without a base hit and we're not done yet full count again 15th full count combined by both teams today. Ford off the middle. Martin will make the play. Low hits allowed with the bases loaded, but Texas gets two with them juiced. One off the bat of Zubia, and it's a 7-5 Horns lead. The eyes of the hours in, and we are going into the seventh inning here at UFCU Dish Fog Field. Hey, but Texas has taken their first lead. If you're going to play them long, you might as well win them if you're Texas. It's a good philosophy to have. Scored now in four straight innings. Two in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, three in the sixth. Kristen Stevens is back out, faced the final two hitters in the sixth, and here we go again. First pitch of the seventh. Your team has just taken a two-run lead, did, and you hit the batter. Did we miss a challenge? I, did they challenge each other? Something's yeah. going on. I see. David Pierce got on that phone and yeah. off very quickly. Well, I think the phone calls now down there might be. There's Cole Quintanilla. Yeah. Cole Quintanilla. Cam Fields Cam thinking Field. about it. Yeah, let's Both get the heavy hitters going. We got the lead. Now we got to protect it. Is Blair Henley just hanging out? And they're making sure things are going right. That missed somewhere. Plunk is one for one. And it's 2-0. So David Pierce is not going to mess around here and a call to the bullpen. Well, they know what your coach wants, what he expects, and they know the quickest way to leave a game, and that's it. It's not getting shelled. It's not getting hit. It's not finding the target and throwing strikes. Well, you are just given a lead. Scored three to take a two-run lead. You've come out, thrown three balls, and one of those have hit the hitter. Cole Quintanilla coming in. Protects. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. 
If you have more than 5,000... Is that your office, Low? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. No, it is not. Yeah. It well, was, I mean, it it's, it's the Longhorn Network office, well, but not my specific... Do I don't you have, have an office in the Longhorn I've Network I've got a door. Building? Yes, I do. Okay. So this sums it up. 14 pitchers used. Sorry, I have to hide my laughter. Between both teams, 19 free passes. Texas has scored four runs via the free pass, one off a throwing error from the catcher back to the pitcher. Arkansas has left 10 on base, 289 total pitches. That was a good Friday night back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, this, this, it's been a lot of pitches thrown, a lot of bad pitches thrown tonight. A lot out of the zone, but hey, they got a two-run ball game. Yeah, they're they're going to take it. Yeah. However they can get it, Texas will take it. Either one of these teams. Cole Quintanilla. So now Texas is going to some of the big guns out of the bullpen. And he comes in, and it's still a 2-0 count to Zach Plunkett. Because Tristan Stevens hit the first batter. Jacob Nesbitt, he's over at first. And then two balls to Plunkett. And that's what you want to see out of the bullpen, throwing strikes. At least the first one from Cole Quintanilla. We've seen both head coaches tonight not waste time coming no. out of that dugout to get someone that, to throw strikes. Pumping him in, it's 2-2. Two -two. They are strikes, but not in the greatest of locations right there. They're strikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. Came in with a 2-0 count. Now it's two twos on. <laughs> yeah, back to what we see. Full count. Do you run right here? Interesting. Try to stay out of the double play. Has been two for two in stolen bases this year. He's gone. The throw from McCann. Strike him out, throw him out. How about that? It wasn't the best of throws. He got rid of it quick on the jump by Nesbitt. But watch Lance Ford stay right in there with it. He tags him when he's already by him. Got him on the arm. Are we sure? Right there. Yep. No review and check swing put into play. Kentonia will pick it up. That's just what the doctor ordered. Can't throw strikes. Bring in Cole Quintanilla. He does that. Gets the strikeout. McCann the throw. The tag, we think, placed on the spot by Ford. Bases loaded. Got a hit batter. Got a walk. Then the catcher throws it over the head of the pitcher for another run. I mean, you just imagine ways to score runs without getting a base hit, and Texas has done it tonight. It's, it's happened in this ball game. And McCann is taking some absolute man of steel. Uh, it's, 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 this has been on both sides because we're, we're approaching 300 pitches, so you, you can't do that on one team. So, and we have a 7-5 ball game, so it, it has been both teams' inability to throw enough strikes. And we haven't had a whole lot of big hits. And it's been one RBI hit. And when it's when it's all said and done, whoever wins, whoever loses, you lose, you go, hey, we're forgetting about that game. And if you win, you're like, we're forgetting about that game. Both sides. Hibbler pops it up. Martin has it one down. So seven runs for the Longhorns, one RBI hit. That was off the bat of Zach Zubia. Two out single to right to tie the game. Texas has scored on two walks with the bases loaded. Two hit batters with the bases loaded. One error that was on the overthrow from Plunkett back to Liam Henry. 
and one sack fly which came with the bases loaded off the bat of Michael McCann. This is Duke Ellis looking at strike one. But David Pierce will tell you it's a sign of maturity that Texas is finding a way to win some of these games that you could say they had no business in winning. I mean, go back, you go back to Sunday, oh, yeah. right, against Texas yeah. Tech. Well, that, that was not a well-played game, necessarily. Well, it wasn't, and they did. They fought hard, scratched, grinded it out. Well, there's no way. He, he said it. How did we win that ball game? 300 pitches in the ball game. What do we get? It seems like it should be something. Like free wings at a local restaurant. Taco, where are we talk? Is he buying? Just say the name. I'm, I'm not buying. <laughs> See, I, I'm not saying buying? the names because I don't, you know, I don't know who we got sponsorships with and different things like that. I'm just saying free food. I think for 301 pitches is well, appropriate. You know, you can say Taco Shack. Can say Taco Shack, but Big Taco ain't here anymore. Arkansas pitching tonight has thrown 167 now. But before that, 166, 83 strikes, 83 balls. Wow. I haven't talked about it too much in depth this season. How the dynamic also has changed, especially in a game like this where you're struggling, it's a little ugly. All your team is down, and you're Texas. And last season, it could just be okay, wait for Cody to get up. You know, once you get to Cody, something magical can happen, and oftentimes it did. There's not that dynamic in this Texas lineup. Well, they're struggling offensively. As you mentioned, they have one. RBI base hit in the game. They found a way to score them, taking advantage of what the opponent gives you. And it's not just one guy that no, they're relying take it, on that's to a, come that's through. A team, yeah. Three one to Austin Todd. Todd had a habit was about to trot down the first baseline. Full count. Runner is off. It gets by Ellis. Will think about third, but he will stay home at second. Back to back walks. And I would imagine at some point in time, you're going to get some more activity in that Arkansas bullpen. Or they may just be saying, we got to ride out Caden Monk. Here comes Dave Van Horn. The pitcher. Might have already been he, ready. Yeah, he's ready to go. He's hot and in. And another change from Coach Van Horn. Understandably so, with the control issues tonight. Carter Sells is the new pitcher. We'll have more on him when we return right here on Longhorn Network. Your resume. Who sells? Carter sells. Here in Austin, Texas, getting into the late innings. Finally, when Texas is at its best from the sixth inning on, plus 35 and run differential. First five innings, only plus two. That's interesting. I mean, that means that you're doing pretty well against the bullpen. Mason having a little fun there. The helmet on backwards. Carter Sales in this ball game for Arkansas. Freshman out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Fastball slider pitcher. Low 90s with the fastball for Sales. 
limited action on the season. So two on for the Longhorns. Duke Ellis and Austin Todd both walked by Caden Monk. And Texas trying to come through on their own accord with runners in scoring position. As Ellis is on second. Just one RBI hit tonight. That's from Zach Zubia. Back in the sixth inning. Tied the game up at five. Two runs would then score with bases loaded walks. Back to back. Here's Eric Kennedy. Hit once, walked twice, one ground out. First pitch up. Ball one. It's an epidemic. Something in the water. It is an epidemic. I would imagine in all your years around this game, on this level, you've seen some ugly games where pitchers from both sides struggle with control. But I mean, how bad, how egregious is this tonight? This, this could be tops. I mean, for real. I mean, a lot of times at the next level, it's not because of control, it's because they just can't get anybody out. It's yeah. hits. And then you see a position player come in and maybe throw. But this, yeah, I mean, this, every pitcher that's been in the ball game has struggled with command. Except Cole Quintanilla last inning when he came in the ball. You're exactly right. And activity. Right in up to start to throw again quickly in the Arkansas bullpen. Coach Van Horn said he had seven freshmen he was he was going to throw out there. And this is the sixth so far. So there's one more he wants to get in there. Three straight walks and they are loaded again. Bases loaded in the third. The fourth. In the fifth, folks, Arkansas. Excuse me, the sixth. Arkansas came into the the game with a 4.13 strikeout to walk ratio. They're catching up. They that's being cut in half in this ball game. Five strikeouts on the night. So check that bases loaded in the third, fifth, sixth, and now the seventh. Here's Zubia. You look at it, uh, wild, effectively wild. 15 free passes. Texas has seven runs. You throw a base hit in there, Texas could have blown this game wide open. Yeah, it, 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 but it makes it hard to hit when you right it, when it's all over the place. Zubia with the only RBI base hit of the night. Really good at bat. Went with the pitch to the right side. Drove in a run to make it 5-5. Arkansas struck first in this game with a four spot at the top of the second. Scored the first 11 runs last night before Texas answered with four. And what turned out to be an 11-4 win for the Razorbacks. Popped up right side. Will it be deep enough for Ellis? Ellis will tag the throw from Kerstad in time and got him. Ellis thinks he avoided the tag, wants a challenge, but the throw was in time. Did Ellis beat the tag? We'll take a look at it. Full speed. It looked like he got around the leg that was blocking home plate. A throw from Kerstad. That's going to be a close one. I think he got around it right there. Throw up the first baseline a little bit. You see, Plunkett has to go out and get it. If he's on the base right plate right there, he's safe. It's a hand in the air. Looks like the hand gets down right there. But again, is there enough to overturn this? 
Well, Ryan Reynolds was in the on deck circle telling you to get down, and he had a great view of it. Yeah. And he he's the one that immediately went. He didn't think. Well, what's so. he going to do? Is he going to punch him out? Well, no, but he, like, you're yeah. right, Duke. I've been right there to say, well, you're out, so I you, you <laughs> you just, just walk you back, just walk away. But good, good angle right here. Gloves not on, hands on the plate. That should be a good look here. Looks though the hand at one point is over the plate, but it, has he touched down on the plate? Like right there? Well, the plate is sunken. But you see a, a downward motion of Duke's hand that seems to indicate that right there he has not touched it yet. Until he almost touches the back edge of the plate. I think it's on. In the meantime, everyone has to sit around. Runners stay at their places in the field. The Arkansas players are just hanging out down the third base line, waiting for the call. Carter sells. I might have to throw a couple just in case. Do you like sending them there? Yeah, it had to take a perfect throw, and the throw was up line. So up the first base line a little bit. Duke got a good jump. As soon as he caught it, he was off. Now, if this stands, it will be bases loaded in four innings with no base hits for Texas in those situations. We'll take a long look at this one. Wait. See it a lot of different ways. When is that tag applied? It's up in the air right there. But he has not touched the plate, right. has he? No, not right there. Has the tag been applied before this hand goes, makes it downward motion? This palm's not on the base right there? Right there it is. But from that angle, we cannot you definitively can't. say when yep. the tag is applied by Zach Plunkett. We can see when Ellis makes contact with home. So you all are saying there's not enough to overturn it. Yes, sir. It's the longest review we've had. The longest one. Very difficult to tell. And here's the call. He's out. So Kerstad gets it done, the tag from Zach Plunkett. And we are going to the eighth. At touch of Duke Ellis back in right field after that play was reviewed. The call stands as that man Kerstad made the throw from right to get Ellis at home. And that is potentially a huge run with the way this game is going. Strike one. That's what Cole Quintanilla was brought in to do. Pop back, Craig Swindell, no. Top of the lineup here for Arkansas. Perhaps the last time they will have a shot to change this game. Martin. To Duke Ellis. Correct that. Ellis back in center field. Austin Todd in right. Nothing has changed defensively. Take the top of this order. Casey Martin now 0 for 5. As Texas has handled Martin in this short two game series. Kerstad to Shaw. Shaw will make the play in enough time with the second out. Oh, 
Rocky effort by Tate right there. Something again they worked on defensively before the ball game was flipping the ball to your pitcher. But if you don't have to, don't do it. Tate took it himself right there. And that's forward territory for Tate Shaw. He's not played a lot of first base in his life. Hey now. Coming at you, son. It's contagious. Trevor Ezel, two for three, a couple of singles, scored a run. Hit well, right field. Todd is there, three up, three down. Funny what happens when you throw strikes. One of the greatest robberies in sports, it goes way back. When it's Texas and Arkansas, back to the days of the Southwest Conference, Mike Guy, Lance Blanks, DJ, Roy Williams, the good old fashioned dog pile. These are some of the notable moments, and I think the first one that comes to mind. There wasn't a dog pile, that was just a celebration. I ah, look like a dog pile, man. Okay. First moment that comes to mind is Ryan Reynolds leads off. I think it's obvious. It's game of the century. Randy Peschel going up to get it from James Street. Texas cashing in to take down Arkansas 15 to 14. 1985 College World Series. Yeah, you down, were there. Down 7 nothing. Came back to beat Arkansas after the seventh inning because of something about the seventh inning stretch and taking me out of the ball game that we came back in three games in that World Series. Should have came back four with another, another national championship <laughs> on the go. wall. But yeah, well, that was a great, a fun comeback. Coach Roy, Coach Roy going for two, down 14 nothing in Fayetteville. Yeah. That was a huge good. play at the time after the first touchdown. There's old Rusty Richards back there, my best friend since fifth grade. He was a big part of that comeback against Arkansas in 85. Playing some first base here. <laughs> Sitting next to his lovely wife, wife Trisha. There's Earl. See, he's a pretty intense guy. He's locked in. <laughs> he's locked in. He might be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Someone give him a nudge. <laughs> Inside on Reynolds. And just all the, the little stuff when it comes to Texas and Arkansas it makes it entertaining as well. You just go back a few years ago to when Arkansas and Texas played in the Texas Bowl. And there was a whole oh, picture yeah. of Brett Bielema and supposedly he had the mean, horns down. Do it it. Is, and he didn't mean to do it, but it was there. <laughs> hey, it's just something to talk about. It's it's what a rivalry should be. There should be some bad blood. Another walk. But give it to the Arkansas fans. They've shown up. They've been loud. They've been classy the whole time. We've seen so many Razorback fans and staff Hit the foul balls, pass it on to the little kids wearing burnt orange, pass it forward. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a fun two-game series. Well, when, when they've had the opportunity, they, what you say, called the Hogs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and which you should. When the when opposing team is playing in your stadium, in your field, and they have a reason to cheer, they should be able to cheer. The only way to stop it is not to let them have a lead. And Texas has done that late in this game, and we haven't hurt too much. Do something about it. Exactly. You don't like the horns down? Do something about it. I, it's my standpoint but as well. If you're going to put the horns down, do it before the game's over. Okay? Yeah, so you can kind of. Yeah. Don't wait till the game's it. over. and then. Yeah, that's the ah, easy way to do it. Right. Yeah. Like, peace out, see you later. Yeah. Now we'll do the horns down. So you should have to live through it. You show should me, have to show deal me something early the and then back it up. Okay. I like that. I agree with that. If you can do it and back it up, okay. But don't do it after the fact. Was horns down a thing when you were playing? Sure. It is with the with the Aggies and the Sooners. But now I think 
us as Longhorns have made such a big deal about it that it's nationwide. Well, that's, it is catching on. Yes. And it's something we're going to have to, as Longhorns, to put up with. It's been there for a long time. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's part of being one of, if not the most recognizable brand in college sports. You take the good with the bad. That's what they did on the Facts of Life. The song, the jingle. Oh. <laughs> Look at me like, where did that come from? Well, it came with 17 walks. And <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're out of mascot trivia. 350 pitches. <laughs> We've already talked about launch angle with Keith. Nothing else to go with. Two two to Shaw. In a full count. We've said that previously tonight. How many full counts, Kurt? Eighteen full oh. counts. How many three ball counts, Kurt? Twenty seven three ball counts. Reynolds in motion, fouled back. This is also a game where Kurt and Graham, they get their money's worth. There's a lot of numbers being thrown out there. A lot to keep up with. Not the stats you typically like to track. No. They're not the fun, sexy ones. But I have a feeling they're kind of digging it. Yeah. They like it. The more oddball. <laughs> the more at home these guys are. Full count. Throw down will mean nothing as that is a walk. All right, Grams, what's our free pass count now? 17. 17 for Arkansas alone. That's four for Shaw. Ryan Reynolds has three. Well, you say that Texas has seven runs, but they've left 13 on base. They're three for 17 with runners on, one for 12 with runners in scoring position, and have one two out hit tonight. There's They'll take it. Seven five lead in a bunt situation. McCann is just hoping he doesn't have to wear another one. He's been hit twice tonight, and this guy's been taking all sorts of abuse. Oh, a little slash. Throw to first. Ezel will get back in time. Well, it worked. Just, just like the sack, yeah. When you see the rotation play, which was on, it, McCann did exactly as you're, as you're taught, pull the bat back and, and swing the bat there because the infield's moving, and it got the guys moved up. You can see everybody moving, third baseman charging, shortstop going to third. There's nobody at second. And so you get the out at first, and... You get the job done, it's the same advancement as a bunt. Number nine hitter, Lance Ford. Got a single to his credit. He's also drawn a walk and pops that one back. Got to come up at this point if you're Arkansas. You're down to three outs offensively, so you got to cut the thing off at the plate. I told you they like How this, many foul balls this tonight? kind of stuff. 53 foul balls. We got numbers for everything that's, up that's here. That's cutting into the budget. <laughs> and he's going to have to go find some more baseballs. Or it's just four dozen. Go to CDC and ask for more money to buy some balls. Fifty-four. Horns one for 13 with runners in scoring position, yet they've somehow have scored seven runs. And I say somehow, we know how that's been. It's 
been control problems for the Arkansas pitching staff. 0 2 to 4. Inside ball one. There's only going to be one number that Texas will be worried about if this score stands up, and that'll be 16. It'll be their 16th win on the season. Yeah. You throw everything else out the window and go to Fort Worth and get ready for your conference series. Yeah, burn this box score. Let's take that dub. If Texas can hold on, you expect Quintanilla to come back out and finish this one off? And there's activity in the Texas bullpen. Yeah, I think it could be Blair Henley just getting the bullpen in. Because this day to throw is Saturday. I believe that's him down there yeah. throwing. 2-2 two, two to Ford. Rifle, but right into the glove of Jack Kinley. He was trying to double somebody off, but nobody was home. That's good base running. Yeah. You can you can surely get picked off right there. Well, the ball hit that hard. And this Van Horn's gonna go to the bullpen one more time. Pitcher number eight entering the game for the Razorbacks as the night is done for Carter Sells. Colin Taylor had been warming up, and that's who it is. Let's take a look at the new Hawk pitcher when we get back. Colin Taylor enters the game for the Arkansas Razorbacks. There's two down with two on. And Mason Hibbler coming up for the Longhorns. Seven to five, Texas leads. Razorbacks put the first four up. Texas methodically got back into it. And a big part of that has been the free passes issued by the Arkansas pitching staff. So Colin Taylor becomes the eighth pitcher tonight for the Razorbacks. Trying to keep Texas at bay here and keep it a two run deficit going into the ninth. Seventeen Texas batters put on <laughs> via a walk or a hit batter. One way to stay awake, right there. Yeah. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Still floss time. Oh, you know what the floss is? Zonk's. He's, Come he's, on. He's, he's hidden. Zonk is hidden. <laughs> The floss. I mean, do you have a breath of air in this world? You know what the floss is. I'm just surprised. I'm sorry, cool guy. No, I got you. underestimated you. I got a little Wayne on my iPod, too. <laughs> well, no, I know you're kidding now. You called him Little Wayne. L I T T L E space Wayne. I'm trying to act cool. I'm just, <laughs> just a dad. Hibbler, 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position to start the year since 7 to 12. Opportunity ripe for Mason Hibbler to try to get some more insurance before we turn it over to the ninth. Coach Van Horn, knowing that he was going to throw six, six, seven freshmen in this ball game, knew he might take a few lumps, but I don't think he was expecting this. You know, it, it, just, it felt like they were throw strikes. Right. Yeah. How's Zach Plunkett feeling behind the plate? He's had a, he's had a long night. <laughs> Two hundred and one pitches now for Arkansas pitching. One hundred and four balls, ninety-seven strikes. Is that 54 foul balls now, Kurt? Five. 55. 2-2. Two -two. Colin Taylor. Trying to end it right here and set up his bats in the top of the ninth. Full count.
one pitch away from loading the bases for the fifth time tonight. Heads up. Full count, two outs to Hibbler. And for the fifth inning, we've got the bases loaded. Now, it remains to be seen if Texas can get a base hit with the bases loaded. Have not in the previous four instances. Runners are scoring position. Lance Ford hit one about as hard as you can. Yep. This one right at Kinley in second. Texas loaded the bases in the third. Caught two free passes. <laughs> Running out of friends in the Arkansas bullpen. So two free passes and then. Bullpen catchers had a rough day. Shaw flew out. Also bases loaded in the fifth. With one out, Texas only got one run in. That was off the sack fly to center from Michael McCann. And the six had him loaded, got two walks, and the seventh loaded with one out. Zubia flew out to right, Ellis thrown out at home, and here we go in the eighth with Ellis up. Well, two out hits have been hard to come by, but Texas has scored six runs with two outs tonight. They just hadn't come via the base hit. In there for strike two. Well, Duke, this is sixth at bat in eight innings. And Texas only has seven runs. You don't see that too often. Chopped. And there it is again. Bases loaded. No base hits to show for. To the ninth inning we go. Hey, what do you? Our guys, Grams and Kurt, they've been working overtime in this one, digging up these gems. 15 pitchers used, 20 free, 25 free passes, 18 of them from Arkansas, 56 foul balls, 18 full counts, three hours, 48 minutes. There's Kurt pretending to work. Kurt, you're circled. 350 total pitch. Wave or something, man. He's playing it cool. There you yeah. go. <laughs> cool guy. There's Grams. There's Grams. Do something. There's Do a Grams. pose or flex your biceps. Nothing? Okay. That was your moment, man. That was your moment. Dominic Fletcher will lead off the top of the ninth. He has been a tough out for the Longhorns. Three doubles in two games, and that is ripped. Shaw makes the play. Kitania covers. And how about that one from Tay Shaw? Stayed on the knees and a nice, easy toss to Cole. Makes a good stop, smothers it over there. A nice, easy toss. Good job by Cole getting over there quick so he could make that easy toss. And again, things they worked on in yeah. practice today. I don't think they went to the knees like that too much, but that's a great play. Hello. Clear first ball delivered to Jordan McFarland. That was a little wide. Just a tad bit. Keith, you've kind of gotten quiet over the last three innings. But just watching just guys' inefficiency of being able to play catch. Pitching is, is, is it's hard to do, yes. It's hard to hit. Good recovery. <laughs> <laughs> can't play catch. <laughs> I give it up to the fans that are still here. Oh, absolutely. Hang in with it. Late night. As it is now approaching 1020 here in Austin.
Some Dr. Pepper and some Coca-Cola. That's how you make it through. Upstairs, full count. Can we add that to the graphic, Gramps? Do we have time to do that? Hot shot, foul territory. Left side, Souvenir gets away. But Eric Kennedy to the win. rescue, oh no. Yeah, and here comes Kennedy again. Place it in. Everybody's having a little trouble playing catch tonight. Cam Fields, jersey on. Oh, there's Gus. It's my first one. Full count, one out to McFarland. Texas will head up to Fort Worth to start a three-game series against TCU after going two and one at Texas Tech against Texas Tech to start off Big 12 play. McFarland down on strikes. Texas one out away. I would say this would be a big win for Texas if they can hold on, considering the quality of the opponent, the way yesterday went, and the way this game started. Oh well, yeah. Chasing 11 yesterday early and chasing four early today. Texas just started tacking runs on. Eventually were able to get the lead. Didn't have to get a hit to get most of their runs, but sometimes you just take them as they give you. Well, you just look at it. You go back to the beginning of the broadcast as we talked about it. You know, this is one of those games where you're trying to build something back up. You, you've been in a gauntlet to get here, you're going through. LSU, Stanford, and Texas Tech, and then right in between Texas Tech and TCU in conference play, you have the number nine team in America come to town. Texas trying to snap a five game losing streak against Arkansas, dating back to 2012. Won't get that call, it's 2 1. And that hits Kinley. So Quintanilla will now bring the tying run to the plate. Well, that hurt too. That's right off the top of the kneecap. Cam Fields in the pin along with Brandon Ivey. It's up to Jacob Nesbitt. Nesbitt has a couple of singles to the right side. Strike one from Quintanilla. Inside ball one. Just above you there, Zeke. Quintanilla strike away from closing this one out. And snapping the streak against Arkansas. <laughs> to left field, fair ball. Here comes Kinley. Kinley will score. It's a one-run game. A clutch two-out double by Jacob Nesbitt, and the Hogs ain't ready to go home yet. Got a breaking ball up. Stairs. Stayed in. They put a good swing on it. Drove it down into the corner. And we're going to have a pinch hitter. Matt Goodhart. 
We played DH last night. We'll check in. He will hit in place of Zach Plunkett. Goodhart coming off a fantastic series against Missouri. Nesbitt is the tying run on second base. Ball one. To have a right-handed hitter on deck here, but if you put him on, that puts the go-ahead run on on base. And it's Christian Franklin who's driven in five against the Longhorns in two games. 1-1 one, one to Matt Goodhart. Goes back, though, to a hit batter. And set up this rally for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Another two-strike count. Nesbitt came through. Can Goodhart follow and tie this one up? What a good cut. Was nice. right there. So close. Antonia slams the door. Texas moves to 6-0 in one-run games and snaps a five-game losing streak to the Arkansas Razorbacks. First win against the Hogs since 2005 when Augie Garrido led the Longhorns to a win in the deciding game of the Austin Regional. That set the tone for a national championship season. It wasn't the prettiest game. But Texas is going to take it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's his 16th win of the season. Again, another one against a ranked team. You knew coming in it was going to be a tough two games midweek in the middle of conference play. So Texas, you know, fell down early yesterday and scratched a few in there and fell down again today. And it really took what Arkansas gave them in this ball game, which was enough to win by one run. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the couple things that, that jump off the page uh, resiliency. You know, stayed in there. They just they bounced back, and the Texas bullpen was just the young Arkansas bullpen couldn't match what Texas bullpen did. Texas is young as well, but if you look in the bullpen, five innings of work, two hits, one run. It was earned. Only walk one, struck out six, and that's coming out of the Texas bullpen. Now, it is your closer that finished the game out, uh, and Graham's another great note right there. Arkansas pitching with 18 free passes. It was most problematic with the bases loaded. So many of those runs from Texas because of hit batters with the bases loaded, walks with the bases loaded. Five times, Texas had runners on every base. No base hits in those situations, yet they still come up three hours with the win. Three hours and 53 minute ballgame. It was a marathon, but not a sprint. Texas wins. You're going to stay out here that long, win it. Next up for Texas road trip to TCU. Saturday's game will be on ESPNU at 7.30 Central Time. For Greg Swindell, Keith Moreland, I'm Lowell Galindo. Thank you so much for watching Texas baseball on Longhorn Network.